TNA bar to a whole nother level. This is your last shot in 2010 for this title. But I'm only gonna need one more shot. I was born with a dream. I was born to be a champion. To be a champion. And now, TNA Wrestling presents Genesis. History, welcome everyone to Genesis. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome to the Impact Zone, Aaron Bischoff and the Immortal Hulk Hogan. Well, guys, I guess all there is to say is welcome to Genesis. And on top of that, welcome to the brand new Impact Zone, guys. Hey, we told you there was going to be change. We told you everything was going to be moving and shaking. And this is just the beginning. This is the, just the beginning of the change here. You know, I got one thing to say about six sides. You had it, and it only got you so far. Now we're taking you all the way, Jack. No more eight sides, no more six sides, no more stinking playpen rings. This is where professional wrestling was meant to be done. This is where we shed our blood sets and tears, and we're changing it whether you like it or not, because this is where professional wrestling was born. Now, when you talk about professional wrestling, our competitor, all he talks about is sports entertainment. He's afraid to even mention the word professional wrestling in his dressing room. That's why I'm proud to be here at TNA. I'm proud of all of our TNA wrestling fans. And I'm proud 
to be partners with Dixie Carter and you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you, Hulkster. And I've only got one thing to say. It's quite obvious that these people, like all people, it's human nature. Nobody likes change. Well, change is what we are all about. And it starts here. It starts with this ring. But I'm going to tell you one thing. Get used to change, because there's a hell of a lot more coming your way. Well, I guess, in closing, guys, there's only one last thing to say. What you gonna do, Vince McMahon, now that TNA is coming for you, brother or sister? Genesis might have with the incredible Hulk Hogan and the uh, and Eric Bischoff. I think the new impact zone. Lots of changes going on. You hear what Bischoff had to say. He said, get used to change. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with change. Change is a great thing, especially when it's in a positive direction. And I think, you know, when I walked in this building earlier today in the impact zone, and I saw the traditional four-sided ring, I smiled. I'm like, that's pro wrestling, and that's what we are. And I think that I speak for all of us when I say that I'm damn proud that TNA is known as the wrestling company. It's Mike today. it's Taz, welcoming you to Genesis, and I know that you've had your share of sports entertainment. Yeah, and uh, I don't miss it. <laughs> I had a lot of sports entertainment. No thanks, I'm good here now. Let's talk about the main event tonight in Genesis. AJ Styles to defend the TNA World Heavyweight Championship against the challenge of Kurt Angle. I mean, no, this is Kurt's uh, final shot in 2010 for AJ Styles' TNA title. Can Kurt seal the deal and become champ tonight? Absolute pressure-packed situation for Kurt Angle. Bottom line, it's must win for the Olympic gold medalist. I think when the pressure's on a guy like Kurt Angle, you know, he hits home run. He usually hits a home run when there's pressure on him. We'll see tonight. Let's get Genesis kicked off. What do you say? I'm ready. Let's do it. And we open the in-ring aspect of our Genesis event with the defending champion facing a mystery challenger. Time for the X Division Championship match. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the opening contest live at TNA Genesis. It is for the TNA X Division Championship, scheduled for one fall with a 30 minute time limit. Introducing first from Brooklyn, New York, the TNA X Division Champion, Amazing Red. You know, Mike, the tough thing here is when you have a mystery opponent, obviously it's a mystery. How do you prepare for who, who, who you know, who you have to face? We always talk about the advantage, that inherent advantage that a champion has. But to me, Amazing Red, he's at a total disadvantage because he has no idea who the challenger's gonna be. Well, we're about to find out. Who is it? Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger from Santa Monica, California, Ryan Kendrick! Wow! Oh, yeah, I'm digging it! Brian Kendrick! This dude is off the chart! Oh, you're familiar with Brian Kendrick, oh, very yeah. accomplished <laughs> competitor in making his TNA debut tonight at Genesis, and what an opportunity for Brian Kendrick to come to TNA and get a shot at the X Division Championship. And that's what it's all about right there. Amazing Red's X Division title. How does Amazing Red hang on to the title here tonight against Brian Kendrick? What a shocker here. I guess we've solved the first of our two mysteries for Genesis, Taz. We remember that, that Hulk Hogan talked also about how the potential is unlimited for the other mystery man that we'll see later tonight. Remember he said it's a heavyweight that could be an eventual world champion. Yeah, I am extremely intrigued to see who Hulk Hogan is speaking of. But right now, Brian Kendrick against Amazing Red for the X Division title. A nice snatch in the hand and getting some control. A version of a Fujiwara armbar on Amazing Red by Kendrick. And I guess as one would anticipate, we see that Kendrick tries to ground the high flyer Amazing Red early on, but immediately Red back up to the base. Kendrick able to roll through and break the hole. Well, for those who are not familiar with Brian Kendrick, he's, he's kind of a little bit unorthodox. 
You know, he's, uh, you know, at times, he'll do some high flying, he'll do some ground and pound. He's an offbeat type guy. I think he's a great fit for the X Division, if you think about it. And he has that kind of offense. He can go high risk at times, if necessary, but at the same times, he can really take you down just like this. Yeah, well, I think, in my opinion, I, I think Brian Kendrick is great for the X Division or any division here in TNA. Look at controlling it with that arm bar. Going for a pin maybe here, Kendrick. Got him, oh! And a good way to control your opponent is control a wing, an arm. This version of a, oh, have a clutch with. How about those cross face shots at the same time? And then he maintains the contact by floating over and grabbing the side headlock out of the camel clutch. Never yeah. lets up. Absolutely, and I think to your point, Mike, grounding, grounding the, the dangerously high-flying X Division champion, Amazing Red. It's been his strategy right from the outset. Whoa, 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 you see the whoa, quick whoa, whoa, roll up by Red and Kendrick shoulder shot down for a two count. Oh, he missed it. He even missed that second oh kick. Immediately powered down by Kendrick into the pin. That was the most intense Oklahoma roll I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Clothesline miss, Red able to slide through. Oh, snaps it off, and Kendrick out to the floor. As Red finally gets yeah. that feel for the offense going. Watch out. Goes slingshot out to the apron, then slingshot back in. Able to catch Kendrick with that elbow in the side of the head. Oh, looked like, yeah, it looked like uh, Brian Kendrick, I believe he oh. drove his shoulder into the knee of Amazing Red. Oh my God, Amazing Red landed hard there. Flying kick to the face. And again, you gotta assume that Amazing Red, you see Brooke Hogan there rooting on Amazing Red, Tok Hogan's daughter. Oh, look at that shot. Good Lord. As we anticipated, Taz, right from the outset of this match, the inability of Amazing Red to have any kind of game plan or strategy. Exactly. And we're seeing how it's paying off here for Brian Kendrick, who's been in control for much of the match. Yeah, when you have to prepare for a mystery man, which I personally have never done, but I have been that mystery man, actually against Kurt Angle years ago, and, and it's a better position to be in to be the mystery man. Oh, wow. Devastating round kick to the hamstring of Amazing Red. Definitely gonna ground. The high flyer, Amazing Red here. And then stakes out the leg and continues the strategy that we have seen from Brian Kendrick in his TNA debut. How about Bobby Lashley? Totally outspoken today. Uh, there you see the close-up look at the X Division Championship belt. I know you heard it. What did he say? He's not going to have a match tonight here at Genesis. TNA's not going to make money off the name Bobby Lashley. Yeah, I heard all that scuttlebutt today about Lashley. He's, he, he's not going to wrestle, and he's going to say, he says he's going to do whatever he's got to do to prevent it from happening, whatever that means. I don't know. It's a story we're going to stay on top of as Genesis progresses, and now Kendrick continues this assault on Red, and much of it on the legs, that time working specifically on the knee. Well, you know, Brian Kendrick has been around the block a few times, as, as Amazing Red has. And, you know, Brian Kendrick doing a phenomenal job of picking apart the leg, taking, you know, one of the tables, one of the legs out from the table of Amazing Red. And Red's one of those individuals, too, who, when he gets the support of the fans, when he's able to get the offense rolling, he really turns into a completely yeah. different competitor. And yes. he hasn't been given that opportunity no. well, to, to get rolling in this match. Well, because Brian Kendrick's shutting him down. And, and, and Amazing Red can't utilize the 12th man, meaning our audience here in TNA. Kendrick right back at Red, just full court pressing him right from the start. Oh, Tosses yeah. him across the ring, and now Watch Kendrick, oh, oh, Kendrick yeah. caught in that precarious position. <laughs> he was going to go high risk from the middle rope, and that opening, that enabled well, Red to connect with the kick. And this is where Amazing Red is simply that, amazing. Watch this, folks. Who knows what he's going to do? <laughs> Sensational flip from the top by Red. TNA fans are a massive audience going ballistic right here for this amazing first wow. summer, summer salt into Kendrick. Look at Amazing Red. Impact yeah. zone just explodes for that offensive move. Brooke Hogan oh. likes it at ringside as well. Absolutely. Amazing Red just throwing caution to the win. Now what? Who knows what Red's gonna do here? 
That's a missile. Yeah. Missile drop kick and hit to perfection off the top. Gonna go for the cover. Have the leg hook. Here's two. Oh. Well, you notice when Red went up to the top, he hit that missile drop kick, but at the same time, you can see he was trying to get the blood flow going back into his leg and into yeah. the knee. So it's still having some kind of an effect on him from the early beat down of Kendrick. And we don't know what kind of ring Ross sits on Brian Kendrick. I, I don't know the man's schedule or what he's been doing, but it, you know, it, maybe it's been some time since he's competed. And Amazing Red is, is totally in ring shape here. Kendrick's getting drilled here. And I'm just thinking through the history of these two as we see Red oh. Oh, Kendrick able to sidestep him as he came off the ropes and then goes right back to working on the leg with that yeah. single leg crab. Yeah, he's got a, a low ankle single leg crab. Look at, look at how Kendrick is pulling the knee from the body. Got it. Just, just imagine the pain that Amazing Red is in here. And as Red tries to make his way over to the rope to get a break, you wow. see that Kendrick very wisely pulls him back to the center of the ring, and at the same time... Well, he's got a clasp. His, hand, his hands were clasped while he had the ankle picked and, and Amazing Red head, and now his head button Red. Violent, violence, violence. That And Brian Kendrick, I told you, a little off color, a little off beat. Oh. But strategy, game plan, executed to perfection, at least to this point, because of just that one offensive flurry in the match for Red. Other than that, it's been all Brian Kendrick, the challenger. Well, Amazing Red was able to get to the bottom rope to break the hold. Nothing wrong with that. I'm smart. And now what? Looks like, oh! Kendrick was trying to pull Red out. Red with an insecurity. Can Red capitalize? Watch your back, Kendrick. Watch your back! <laughs> Find the ladder drop kick in the lower spine up to the back of the head. Looks like Amazing Red is trying, Mike, to build some sort of momentum here. Close line missed. Guys are exchanging now, just throwing bombs at each other. A couple of forearm shots quickly from Kendrick as Red still whoa, 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 whoa. able to come through, but you saw even when he got shot off into the ropes there, Taz, he was favoring the leg and favoring the knee. Yeah, I mean, uh, it looked like Red could not get all of that head scissor, but it was enough to ground. Kendrick is a cover. Quick pin attempt here, and Kendrick, good ring awareness, knowing where he's at, able to reach back and grab onto the rope for the break. Yeah, we saw Amazing Red do that earlier in the matchup. Again, that's great match sense. But Kendrick doesn't want to go to the bottom rope. Might look cowardly, but it's a smart strategy. Force the ref to get Amazing Red back. You see that, and he takes advantage of it. The referee backs Red off. Got Kendrick connects with the kick right into the pin, oh. saw Kendrick counting along with referee Andrew Thomas. Well, you can see the frustration starting to build, Mike, on Kendrick here. He can be a little, uh, you know, a little nutty crazy at times, Kendrick. Yeah, you described it best. Off the wall, right? Yeah, off color, off beat, off the wall. He's just off. Outside in, shoulder block by Red. Gonna spring back in, slips up! Yeah, that's it! The two! Yeah. Here is your winner, and still TNA's division champion, Amazing Red! Amazing Red, that was freaking awesome, man. <laughs> Out of nowhere, that match could've went either way, Mike. What a gutty performance for the champion. He comes into this match having no idea who the challenger is, as we see. The cut in red, right into the pin, and right into the win. An amazing red, still the X Division champ, but Brian Kendrick. Oh, excellent showing for Solid debut. For our newcomer here at TNA, excellent debut. No shame in that right there. Amazing red, congratulations to you. You retain your X Division title. Hell of a matchup by both these young athletes. And we open Genesis with a championship match and the X Division title. It remains with the defending champ, Amazing Red. He's still got the gold. Kendrick got hell of a TNA debut, even in defeat. Guys, trust me, I appreciate the favor. I mean, if you guys wouldn't have been there a couple weeks ago, McFoley would have ate my lunch, all right? You did me a solid. We did you a solid, which is why you guys got a match tonight. But please don't forget, all right? Kevin, you're under contract. Scott, kid, not so much. You, you guys still have to prove yourself tonight. Guys, this thing's moving real, real fast. You know, nothing's changed from the first time we talk. And I know everything's for life, I get that, but now you gotta get for real. These guys are moving fast, real, real fast. Things are happening here. This is your shot. 
your one shot, make it count because there might not be another one. This is the first one, and it could be the last one. Make this one happen for yourself. Talk about this other thing. All right, man, I'm with you. All right. He made it pretty clear. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, easy. He is who he is, but he's a good businessman. And you know how Hulk does business, like a shark. Kev, let's destroy these guys, man. Yeah, but let, hey, I gotta look good tonight, man. I gotta look good. You hey. heard him, man. You, you're under, you got a sweet deal. Good for you. You earned it. I gotta earn my what? money tonight, Kev. What about me? What about you? you he's man. got the contract. Well, you heard, he got you the heard contract. contract. Yeah, but it's it's what always Wolfpack pack rules. Guys, we're advertising. Exactly. We're advertising. Exactly, such a turn, man. Come on, man. You know how it's got. Come on. You know how it is, man. Come on. As, uh, sorry, Old school. Are you, are you kidding me? I'm, all right, I ain't Rock, paper, scissors. You're, right. you're kidding. Come on, man. I mean, it's all we. Come on, let us earn hey, our money, Rock, man. Paper, let us hey. earn our money. Uh, Easy E and Hulk, they know how we roll. Oh, jeez. Oh, like, come on, man. Big he grouch. He always loses come on. anyway. Bam! <laughs> Okay, okay. No, wait, wait, wait. Come on. What? Two out of three. All right. All right. Bam. Oh, come on, man. Yeah, that was a tie. Come on. Bam. Rock, paper, scissors to decide who's going to join Kevin Nash tonight. Tag team partner. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Introducing first from Phoenix, Arizona, Sean Mooley! Let's take you back to last Thursday on Impact when Sean Morley was, well, laying out plans for his first film project in TNA. Yeah, that Daniels came out, was pitched an idea for a movie to Morley, and then just this backstabbing attack, and Daniels just with the BME, best moonsault ever, drilling Morley, but Morley coming back like the proverbial house of fire. And it brings us right here tonight in Genesis. Sean Morley going out to the ringside area <laughs> to visit Brooke Hogan. That was nice, Brooke Hogan. She got a souvenir. <laughs> Ladies, I'm here. <laughs> and tonight, tonight I present to you my very first TNA Films production. A full frontal production. <laughs> Produced, directed, and starring Yours truly, Sean Morley. <laughs> and ladies, I hope you are watching in high definition because I don't want you to miss one single inch in the rise of Sean Morley and the fall of an angel. <laughs> This match for tonight at Genesis, and I guess we're gonna hear from Daniels as well. You see, Sean, that's my problem with you. Three days ago, I kick a hole in you, and tonight, what do you do? You come out here talking about movies, sexual innuendo. When are you gonna get it through your thick skull? This is TNA, and this is wrestling. 
You people shut your mouths. I'm not saying that for you. I'm saying it for me. Sit down, Blondie, before I slap your face. Hey, I'll slap your face too, so shut up. Wow. Sean, this is wrestling, and the last person you want to meet on your first night is me. But if you don't understand that, let me put it to you in terms you will understand. Tonight, I'm your worst critic. And I'm not giving your movie a thumbs down. No. What I'm gonna give it is this. Oh, oh, oof. Well, that's pretty much the universal signal for the match to start. <laughs> the opening bell or the one gun salute? The uh, one gun salute and the bell. Well, both these men have something in common. They're both very cocky and a tad arrogant. I'm kind of looking forward to see these two guys have at it, and I guess we're getting ready to rock right here. Oh! First ever singles meeting between the two, and Morley comes off the ropes. He's met with a single leg kick by Daniels, but then the answer by Sean Morley is a big time clothesline, and Daniels is going to slow things down. Yeah, well, Sean Morley obviously has a size advantage here on, on uh, Daniels, but no! Oh. Daniels is a very fleet footed competitor, very quick, crafty, crafty, uh, crafty man. That was nice, nice counter by Daniels. Those quick pa shots, those quick yeah, palm thrusts, palm one after the other, the right oh. and the left. Yeah, palm strikes could do damage out, as can that knee by Morley. Oh! He gets extra momentum with the knees by sending him off into the ropes. Oof! Holding onto the grip, catching him in there, you see, powering him down. Gonna go for the cover. Get him! Yeah, that Russian leg sweep. Very impactful, a lot of whiplash as Morley arches back and drives his opponent on his head. Concentrating his effort with these shots on the ribs of Daniels, lifting the arm up, driving the punch right into the side, right into the rib cage. And it's tough to, oh God, look at that, the point of the elbow of Sean Morley right in the rib cage area. You know, the intercostals of the, of the rib cage, little muscles in between your ribs. Watch this pump handle. Takes him up into the air and then just drives him gut first right across the knee. Yeah, good old fashioned gut buster. Tough to breathe when someone attacks your rib cage in midsection. Morley just grabbing Daniels by the ears to bring him up to his feet and again the forearm shot this time into the ribs. You can just see Sean Morley, he's on a on a mission to be victorious. Oh, what a nice counter. Daniels able to drop down. And that head and neck of Morley snaps back off the top steel cable. And Daniels immediately in, drops him with the clothesline. Yeah, but Daniels, because of his ribs, it's tough for him to capitalize on that offensive maneuver. It's like now Daniels to a vertical base first. And now it's opportunity for Daniels oh, wow. to turn it around in his favor. And that's one way to do it. Use the rope right there, right against the throat and the windpipe, and then snap hey, his neck back. Listen, Daniels, Daniels will take a shortcut any time he has to, to be victorious. I personally like that about Daniels. Now we saw Morley from the opening bell trying to use that size power advantage. And now, what, Look, the, what has he got here? Almost like a, a triangle on the arm. And looks like a version of a, tri of a triangle choke. And, 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 and I think your it is a out. choke. Watch the referee. He was he was looking right at the, at the throat and, and determined it was a choke. That's why he broke the hole. Daniels very impressed with himself. Now, it was an impressive submission hold. Took a lot of air, like attacking the throat region, esophagus area of Sean Morley. It's also a good strategy when it comes oh, to facing God. somebody bigger than you, isn't it, Taz? Yeah, but you just can't breathe, and you, you drop him down, and trying to grasp him, grasping for air, and chopped him right in the throat, Mike. Look at this. Bam, another one. Caught him again. Well, we saw Morley work on the ribs of Daniels. Daniels able to turn the match in his favor, and he's done everything to use chops, submission moves, to work on the throat and take away the win of Sean Morley. He goes back to the offense, but Daniels able to open oh, the brakes wow. and another one of those open hand palm yeah. thrusts. There's a palm strike, palm thrust right into the throat. And sometimes if you hit someone with your palm the proper way, it can be more effective than a closed fist. We've talked about that before, and at the same time, you don't run that risk 
of potentially breaking your own right. hand. Exactly. That's exa exactly the benefit of a palm strike. Look at look at him. He's sure more is trapped here. He's got his head scissored while his windpipe in his throat is directly across the top rope and right back to it. But he breaks for just that split second because of the referee's count and then goes right back again. And he's just milking it right to the four count. Nothing wrong with that. You don't, oh, Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Talk about not seeing a kick coming. He's very innovative, Daniels. You know, many people don't like him because he's such a, oh, a supercilious, over cocky Watch man. This pin. Here's two. No. He's very just a hot dog, Daniels. You know, I, I like that about him. He's got a certain swagger about himself. Got that wrestling ability to back it up, though. At the same time, Taz. Well, you can't, you can't doubt that. But Daniels, he'll bring it. He's in there with a, a true pro in Sean Morley to boot. And Morley hanging on for dear life here, trying to get his win back. And he's just been dazed and confused by this offensive assault of Daniels. Well, relentless, relentless is Daniels. Referee's telling him, look, you're going to get disqualified. You keep choking him, man. Oh. Measureson, just the full extension of the leg with the thrust kick. Picking his spot right here. Daniels, watch out. Oh! Oh, just straight old fashioned right hand. Just waited for Morley to get to his feet. The second that he does, Daniels connects with the rights, and now it's a chance for Sean Morley to try and fight back. Daniels has an answer for his punches. Let's see who gets the better of it. Oh! That clothesline followed by an elbow. Morley now starting to build some momentum. As he hits you with that left arm lariat at the same time. Yeah, kind of gets you off, off tilted. And oh, oh! Again, the ribs, you gotta wonder what the ribs are feeling. Daniel's ribs are feeling, and oh, God! Right across the gut on the top rope. Yeah, gut buster style, elevating Daniels up into the air, dropping him down stomach first. And Morley's had a game plan, so has Daniels in this match. That might be it. Quick pin attempt Morley. here. Morley out of the power move, right into the pin for a near fall. If you think about Sean Morley, loves to go to the top rope for his finishing move, and maybe that's the reason that he's working on the ribs here of Daniels, to that weaken the ribs for when he goes for the top, well, that, if he gets that opening. Uh, double on the hook, Butter, butterfly suplex, double on the hook suplex, beautiful back arch by Sean Morley. But yeah, his finishing maneuver, Morley is that, oh, that front, that splash, and look at oh, this Check now. this out, Koji Clutch yeah, style. That's a Koji Clutch, almost, just about locked in there. It's a move that Koji Kanemoto invented in Japan, and Daniels is using the Koji Clutch as a submission. You can see here that Sean Morley trying to fight through the pain. Might tap out, might get choked out. Referee right on top of the situation to see if he taps. Morley trying again to get the offense and trying to get the momentum on his side, but Daniels pin, will give up the grip. That was a smart move by Morley uh, to adapt, oh, I, even though he was in the clutches of the submission, to roll over with Daniels' shoulder down. And Zagiri kick to the back of the head. Daniels gets momentum from the ropes. Right into that STO type takedown and a near fall again. You see the attack, the relentless attack by Daniels is right to the throat. Everything's pinpointed the throat. Daniels continues the offense, gonna pick Morley up and try and Daniels overpower him. And it's a, that's what he's done. He's trying to beat Morley with a power game here, which I certainly wouldn't have anticipated, but it's worked better for well, Daniels than I ever thought. Going for the BME right here. Oh! That time, Morley able to roll out of the way. Well, right to the ribs again, missing the elbow goes Daniels. Best moonsault ever does it. Oh! Half Nelson into the slam. Well, Daniels is in a bad way. And Morley, looks like he's got his win, looks like he's got his breath back. I don't know, he keeps grabbing at his throat though, Sean. Let's see if he does. Up to the top and maybe that kind of kid did come back to haunt him. Oh, God. Right back to the throat with that open palm strike. Now Daniels has got his arms wrapped around as oh. we see him again connect with a shot. Good God, those are nasty shots. Now what? Daniels, maybe going for a, a superplex? No, no maybe, not. maybe not. Maybe going for that big time hurt can run off the top. Oh, God. And Sean Morley just fly swatted him away. 
slipping though. He's trying to go for that money shot. The ropes. Looks like he's got his balance now. And he hit it. Big top rope splash into the pin and got the win. Here is your winner, Sean Morley. You can see the pain and anguish that Morley's in after the victory. Brooke Hogan's loving it. <laughs> physical matchup by both men. Wow, very physical and very competitive. Talk about a matchup that just went back and forth. But Sean Morley able to hit that big time splash off the top, the money shot as you called it, and get the win. Well, after the heavy offense towards the rib cage and midsection by Morley on Daniels and then to seal the deal with that money shot splash off the top rope, it's a good way to go home. Up next tonight at Genesis, the TNA Knockout Championship is going to be on the line. Our feud has started at Bound for Glory, and it's gonna end at Genesis. Pool in my tights, you call yourself a champion? I don't think so. You have no loyalty, no respect, no pride in that belt. You don't deserve it. I'm gonna prove you're nothing but a diva. You call me a diva? Huh. I'm a knockout now. I proved it to everybody out there. At Genesis, two out of three falls. You are mine, and that championship belt is coming right back where it belongs home to Terra and Poison once and for all. You think you can put your little spire poison on my belly? You think that's the dirtiest, nastiest thing that's been on my belly? Hell no. That's right. One dirty That's what you are. You're damn right I'm one dirty Nothing but a little princess to me. Nothing but a has-been. And at Genesis, I'm gonna beat your booty once again. And I'm gonna pack up your bags and the crybaby is out of here. It's a two out of three falls match as Tara challenges ODB for the TNA Women's Knockout Championship. Yes, another championship bout. It's on deck tonight here at Genesis. Let's switch gears. Let's focus on the females with this knockouts title match and break it down for you with the bullet points in the tail of the tape. It was last month at final resolution where Tara followed up a win over Awesome Kong by defeating ODB to capture the knockouts title. After a New Year's Knockout Eve tournament win, ODB regained the gold when she defeated Tara on our live January 4 Impact. And due to the very competitive nature of this ongoing feud, TNA management decided a one-fall match not sufficient to settle the score. Tonight, let's find out who the superior knockout is Let's see who's the first to win two falls and in the process, the knockout championship. Championship potatoes should be championship tomatoes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Genesis continues with this two out of three fall contest for the TNA knockout championship scheduled with a 30 minute time limit. Introducing the challenger from the state of California, Tara. Tara has poison her lovely pet tarantula and his his or it's a female lovely? snake i mean still trying to spider. go back to lovely it's in a little house there a little glass house with a cap a little look a little bird house like a cockatiel's house but without the net without the bird without the seeds her opponent from minneapolis minnesota the tna knockout champion Drinking any Kool Aid in there, whatever the crazy kids are drinking today. Don't drink the Kool Aid. I did <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> but you don't anymore, do you? <laughs> no. Two out of three falls to decide this knockout championship match, and there's the champ ODB. Quite an attitude that she has. I mean, to the point of calling Tara a has been. Well, I, you know, I don't know what's going on, and that's what, that's what it's about right there that TNA knockout goal. And you see Tara looking at that title that she wants so badly. You know, I don't know what's going on in the head of, of that woman right there, of, of, of ODB. Nobody knows what's going on in no. her head. But in my opinion, I don't think she really feels that Tara is a husband. I don't. I think she's just trying to, to make mind her upset. Games, yeah. Trying to get in the head of Tara as we see them squaring off here. And 
referee caught in the middle here. Yeah, well, it's referee Mike Posey is not going to pull his hair. Look at that. Look at head getting pulled. Took the extensions right out. How do you know they're extensions? I don't know. Well, you Did said extensions. Really? I don't know. Look at this beatdown. Tara looking very aggressive here. This two out of three falls match. Oh! Gonna work on the arm here of ODB. Got it scissored. That's gotta hurt like hell with that massive knee brace on Tara's uh, uh, knee there. And while wow, she almost had a version of a short arm scissor. And oh! Standing moonsault right into the pin. Here's two, and ODB, the champ, able to power out. ODB, very, very rugged woman. Not just the way she looks either, folks. Well, some might not think. She doesn't really look angelic, ODB. She's yeah, known for her physicality oh! as we see the exchange That's physical. of open hand slaps between champion and challenger. Now the forearm shot as ODB comes fighting out of the corner, but Tara's got an answer with that chop. Well, it's a big target. It's a way to light up the chest. That's got to burn like crazy. I'm telling you. I would assume, anyway. Close line misses. Tara connects. Series of kicks. Yeah, nice Using round Using both the kicks. left yep, and the yep. right. Got caught right there. Oh, oh wow. my God, you see that knee. Whoa. I think. That's a that's a <laughs> knockout blow right there. Uh, Tara, you might, might just go for the pin. You might have a beat already. Oh, slingshot into the leg drop. <laughs> off the somersault. Leg hook. Shoulders down and way amazing, I think, to, to us. As ODB clears the cobwebs. Oh, my God. ODB, there's no way she knows where she is right now. Give us some of that liquid courage, wake her up. She, she had the in-ring presence, though, to oh. kick out when the referee was at two, and that's the mark of a true competitor as ODB goes back to the offense. Dig in the uh, acid-washed uh, outfit by ODB. Very retro, that's it. Going back old school, huh? Yeah, yeah. Watch out! Oh, look at the power here. ODB, very powerful knockout. Far away slam, able to toss her overhead. Gonna fire up and, yeah, nip up. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Such the little dove is ODB. Oh, look at that little small Quick package. Up, small package. Got both legs hooked and got Winner the lead. the first fall is Tara. Well, that, that's big right there. If you can get the lead in the three out of three foot. Check that out. That's Chris Hoban of the oh. NFL Tampa Bay Buccaneers as he watches Tara get the first fall win in this hey. championship match. But then this is no, no, no rest period here, ah, at least not as far as ODB is concerned. I wonder if Hoban's uh, really happy that my Jets won today. The Jets win today? <laughs> That's what I heard. J-E-T-S Jets. Right now, it's ODB just bringing it. She's got to be very angry that she's down one fall now and it's two out of three falls match for the knockout title. Now pressure's all on the champion at this point. Tara's ability to win that first fall, it, it puts the challenger in a position here where obviously she's just a three count away from winning the championship and now ODB placed in a position where she's well, got to catch a fall here. Well, Mike, you know, ODB cannot afford to wrestle defensively now. She has to do what she's doing and wrestle offensively. She's got to try and get a victory via pinfall or submission to even the score. This was that all-out offense of ODB that maybe cost her as Tara was able to roll her up for the pin, but I'm with you. She's got to pull out all the stops right now. Again, the knockout championship is at stake here. That was innovative by ODB. Going to shoot Tara off into the corner, and here comes ODB. Oh. Tara able to get the elbow up. What is this? Going to go tarantula on her. And got her hook. Of course, the referee puts in the count. Well, they got that five count in the ropes with the move. Well, you can't win the match with the hole, but you could definitely put your opponent in a load of pain somehow. Oh! Baseball slide style drop kick sends Tara out to the floor. And all of a sudden, momentum, it's on the side of the champion in this second fall. Yeah, and I, you know, if I'm ODB, I don't want to take too much time and leave, leave Tara out there, you go. I was going to say, don't leave Tara out there too long. Take advantage of the opportunity at hand. Oh, you use the ring apron as a weapon by elevating Tara and then dropping her down face first right against the side of the ring. Again, Is that, that Joey Fatone in the front row right next to Brooke Hogan? Yep. That's what I thought. Well, Brooke Hogan, she's... She's getting 
She's feisty herself as she was trying to help Tara and ODB got in her face. I think, was ODB checking her pulse? I think that's what she's doing, a pulse. That's what she's doing, yeah. To her upper pectoral region, to her, her, to neck. her neck. Back to the pecs. Back to From the, the neck. neck to the pec. Neck, pec, pec, neck. Wow. Oh. You use that hair like a handle, and again, you can see the hair coming out of the head. Whoa, whoa, here we go, trying to even it up, even it up. Leg hooked into a pin, but no, just two from the referee, Posey. Right back on it again, and another near fall. And you can definitely get a little frustrated this with the pulse. You should get one of those things you strap around your arm. Good thing you wear, Mike, the pulse meter. Right. And now a body scissors on Tara. Those big, thick, strong legs of ODB. I mean that in a good way. And she's using those big, thick, strong legs to keep Tara dead center in the middle of the ring. Sasha tried to scoot over and, and make it to the ropes well, for a break, but no luck. Yeah, if you, you know, if you're Tara, you want to try and break that grip, you know, pull apart the boots, the legs of of, uh, of the hold by ODB around your waist. But it's, the body says it can really, really wear down and wear, wear down somebody. See the pain that Tara is in here. Combination of the wear down and taking the air away from Tara. Drove her right on her buttocks. ODB did. Now look at this. It's a good way to get a pin. It looks a little wacky, but it's effective. Plus there she, it is. There's the pin. Into the pin, and well, T Tara gets disoriented also from being rolled around yeah. by ODB. Oh, uh, definitely. You get dizzy. Well, that too. You said disoriented. That means dizzy, right? Close enough. All right. Starts with a D. So somehow Tara either has to get to that to the rope to break this hold or try and break the grip of the ankles and boots of ODB. See, that's what Tara's trying to get to the rope, as you can see. But at the same time, ODB maintains the control. She's yeah. close. Tara's up one fall, just to inform you guys that up one fall right now, and it's two out of three falls for the knockout title. She's close. Oh, God. And just grabs her by the hair, brings her back, and the referee's going to make her break the hold. Oh, uh, she pulled the hair. Illegal maneuver. But you know what? I mean, she got, you know, ODB might have got a little too crazy, a little too angry and frustrated, but back to the body scissors. Why not? It's I worth it. Yeah, it's very, very effective. Old school move. You don't see that much. Now with a rear choke while she got the legs in. Look at this. And again, the referee right on the scene, making sure that it's that it's not a choke on the windpipe. Well, it's close. Ah, that's a, I'll tell you what, she is locked in. ODB is locked in. Legs grapevine with the body scissors and that rear choke. She might get her second, uh, I'm sorry, ODB might get her first fall, a victory in one, in one of the two, in two out of three fall match here. And we're watching Tara. As she's, she's trying to get some kind of an offense going here. And you saw the way that ODB rolled her over to the side, out of the view of the referee. It was pretty obvious the there. Wait a minute, what was uh, that? What was that? Coffee filter, I think. Probably. Right or left? Middle. Mm -hmm. and power now. move on the way. Going to take her up to the shoulder. Going to go running power. Slow! Oh. There it is. Follow-up pin, bottom leg hook, no. other leg great find, but no, just two. That's an impressive wow. move that time by Tara. I'm very surprised. I really thought that ODB was going to get that that fall right there and that pin. Pulse seems to be okay. What is with the pulse? I, I we've watched ODB. Have you ever seen, I've seen her do it? I've seen her do it before. Not, okay. not, not quite the neck peck thing, but and I've the, seen her do that before. I think she checked the belt buckle there for a moment too. Now, wow. whoa, 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 look at this. Look how quickly Tara just stopped put on the brakes. Oh, oh, and hits the widow's peak. She might get Quick her. cover. Two. Three great balls. Who is the second train fall? And the DTA knockout champion is Tara. Wow. How about that? How impressive was that? Congratulations, Tara. <laughs> the gold back by winning two straight falls in the two out of three fall match. I said we'd determine who the superior knockout is, and that was pretty impressive.
Oh, you're not kidding. I mean, I thought for sure, like I think most people did, that, oh, look at that knee. Good God, how stiff was that? <laughs> I thought for sure that Tara was going to go down for a fall here. And then we saw this is the first fall in that small package. And then the offense was just brought big time by ODB on Tara. I think many of us anticipated that ODB would even this thing up, took control of the match. That body scissors was answered by Tara connecting with the Widow's Bam. Peak. Bam is right, led to the pin, led to the win, and led to the fact that she is once again the TNA Knockout Champion. Wow, anybody who knows Tara, she is very passionate about being, about holding the Knockout's title. Congratulations to Tara with a poison. Post-match celebration here with Gonna hold poison in the air as part of the victory celebration. She's the new champ. Hope D'Angelo De Niro, tonight, the big white. First things first, baby. Somebody told me that we're having a party right here tonight in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> now, it could be because Pope has arrived, but I can almost put my money on it that it's all going down right here tonight at Genesis because Pope is pimping. You understand what I'm saying, baby? I gotcha, Wrong I gotcha. The but the, <laughs> the big question for tonight is, what is gonna happen between you and Desmond Wolf? Well, if history serves as any indication, everybody knows what went down on January 4th between the Roof one and their Pope. Now, Ruffy, he's a tough character. Ruffy's a technical genius inside that ring. And yes, Ruffy even looks like a character that came out of a trash can on Sesame Street. <laughs> But let's get one thing straight. Ruffy is not, nor will he ever be, the charismatic, pimptacular, hand clapping, foot tapping, pimp slapping, blinging attire, always on fire. Chrissy, I'm so hot. Go to Dairy Queen and get Pope a Sunday. You understand what I'm saying? Tonight, Ruffy, bring your best, baby, because Pope will be, as always, bringing his. Uh, Pope is spoken, baby, and tighten that up, all right? Well, the Pope and Desmond Wolf still to come, but now tag team's gonna take the spotlight. Time for the third of our four championship bouts on Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff's first pay-per-view. Let's go to the taglines to break it down in a preview. And since winning the TNA World Tag Team Championship several months ago, the reign of the British invasion, well, it's been notable for avoiding competition. It's our live January 4th Impact Special. And it was the dominant win by Matt Morgan and Hernandez that vaulted them into the spot of number one contenders. Well, the inevitable moment has arrived for Doug Williams and Brutus Magnus. No longer possible to manipulate the system. The question that we are about to answer, well, it's imminent tonight at Genesis. Can they compete with the pure raw strength of two very hungry challengers? Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is for the TNA World Tag Team Championship, scheduled for one fall with a 30-minute time limit. Introducing first the challengers from Houston, Texas, Hernandez, and from Fairfield, Connecticut, the blueprint, Ben Morgan! It's a two rugged, rugged, rugged young bulls right here, baby. I'll tell you, these are some couple of young wrestlers in this company that have nothing but upside. This is one of those tag teams, Taz, when if you were to break down the TNA roster and say, put together that dream team for me, you'd come up yeah. with the blueprint Matt Morgan and Super Mex Hernandez. You know, me, in my opinion, you wouldn't know when I first heard these two guys were gonna tag up. I didn't think they were gonna have much chemistry, but I was wrong. And you know, I mean they gel, they gel well together as a team. They both in their young careers had a lot of success in singles competitions also. Their opponents from the United Kingdom, the TNA World Tag Team Champions, Brutus Miss and Doug Williams. They are the British Invasion. I guess it's tough to. I guess Mike, it's tough to say that the British Invasion are fighting champions. I don't think you could go there. All right, but they are tonight, though. 
because they don't have a choice. Right, Hulk say. Hogan and Eric Bischoff are in charge. And Hogan and Bischoff, they had that number one contenders match recently on Impact where Morgan Hernandez victorious. There's no more loopholes for the Brits. Let's put up the gold. Let's see if you deserve to be the World Tag Team Champions. Well, that's the way it is here. We know we've heard Hulk Hogan say it. We've heard Eric Bischoff say it. You, you lace them up and go. And you know, he who shines <laughs> basically sticks around here. And that's the tag team titles. And you gotta have, you, you gotta do your best out there every night and you gotta have an awesome effort. All eyes are on every competitor in that ring. Can the Brits hang on to their tag team titles? Crowd support obvious for the challengers in this championship matchup as we start off with the blueprint. Gonna hook it up with Brutus Magnus. And well, we talked about it right in the taglines, that pure, raw power and strength of the challenging team. And actually, the Brits gonna start off with their power man when it comes to Magnus. Let's see how he does. If he's gonna match power, or maybe well, the Brits try to outwit the challengers. Well, Matt, well, it's gonna be tough to do outwit someone like Matt Morgan, very intelligent competitor. Not just damn near a giant, but he's but very intelligent. You see Magnus doing the right thing here, wrestling his pace. Champ's gonna try and dictate the pace here in the early going, and as soon as Magnus gets back in, you see that Morgan's ready for uh -oh. him, and uh -oh. stops him, throttles oh, him. Oh, oh, went to take him up for the choke slam, but Magnus had an answer, and then catches him with the boot, tag is in, Doug Williams well, and Magnus with the double team. First thing Magnus did was put a thumb in the eye of, of Matt Morgan before he booted him, and look at the power of Supermax Hernandez. Dropping both British invasions. We made some interesting comments earlier about you wondered about the chemistry of Matt Morgan and Hernandez as a team. And, and they have just worked together so well. I mean, so often you see the, well, think back maybe to the LAX team. You had the big man Hernandez. You had yeah. the smaller, quicker homicide. Yes. But these two guys, they put the two big men together, the two athletes. You've got the, the basketball well, player in Matt Morgan, the football player in Hernandez. Yeah, well, they And together, they, they just are a great combination. And oof. But Hernandez and Matt Morgan putting their individual egos aside. And you need to have an ego to be in this business, to be a pro wrestler and be successful. But they're working well as a team. But right now, Doug Williams got control over Hernandez. Or maybe not. No, standoff. You're not going to outpower Hernandez. Yeah, Williams tried to go suplex. Instead, Supermax takes him up, but Williams able to drop nice. down behind. Yeah, standing switch by Hernandez. And now watch out. Oh, God. Good way to pop a hip out of the socket. Bad landing on that back oh. body drop sandwich in the corner by Big Supermax. Well, that's a <laughs> big, thick dude right there. And Hernandez, God almighty. T-shirt toss across the ring. He is just all bull, man, I'm telling you. Williams able to catch him when the bull came charging. Well, watch out, watch Matador out, Matador style with the boot and then goes for the cross body. Caught in midair. Oh, whoa, 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 this. Well, oh, Hernandez oh. took him up maybe for a power bomb. You saw him clip from behind illegally by Magnus. Intelligent. Intelligent by the British invasion. Chopped down that, that big, thick leg of Hernandez. Knee drop led to a pin, but barely a two count before the power again evident from Supermax. And Doug Williams, very salty competitor, crafty. Season veteran. One would anticipate that Doug Williams would try and out wrestle either Hernandez uh, or Morgan here. Well, I don't know, let's, Mike. Let's see if I, I maybe get, that, that European style, maybe go to the mat technique. I don't know. I don't think they will. I think that the, the British invasion will. Maybe, maybe I better hold my thought. Wait a minute. Oh! I think that the British invasion are going to try and cut this ring off and keep Hernandez on that side of the ring. Let's see if Williams can peel off this. Looks like a, maybe a superplex. Don't waste your time, man. Do it, Doug. Do it. What the hell? Wait a minute. This might be the only way that the Brits What's could do it. What's going on here? Magnus joins in with the oh. double team suplex. Well, the referee was trying to stop Matt Morgan from getting in the ring. Almost can't fault the referee. Almost. Momentarily distracted as we see the Brits. Again, working together as a team with the two-on-one attack. Well, I tell you what, even with a competitor like Hernandez, who's just a 
just an animal in the ring. I mean, just to show that cockiness, that hoity-toity attitude of the British invasion. It's got to tip your hat to them and tip your teacup to them, Mike. Mag is going to try and keep the oh, big wait. man down. So Jose Reyes champ? Jose! <laughs> no, I guess not. Look at Jets reference early. No, Mets. Hey. Well, right now, grounding, grounding Supermax is Magnus. Ma so Magnus realizes that Hernandez is going to try to get Matt Morgan into this matchup. Oh, shot from outside by Williams, able to catch Supermax with the kick with the boot, and it leads to the abdominal stretch and an assist from outside by Doug Williams. That's the oldest trick in the book right there. Grab your partner's hand for a little more leverage or leverage. While the referee can't see it. Brits say leverage, don't they? Yeah, leverage. They say that over there. They don't speak English too, too good. <laughs> referee checking to see if Hernandez is going to submit. Oh. That's one way to break it. Hernandez, a big hip toss. Trying to Watch get this oh, gut wrench. Shot. How powerful. Oh. Is, that, is that amazing? The size of somebody like Brutus Magnus to Jeez. gut wrench him, take him up to your shoulder and overhead just like that. And look at Matt Morgan stewing on the apron. He realizes the opportunity at hand here. The tag team titles are that, on the line. Is that Nick Hogan at ringside? I think that was Nick Hogan. Hulk Hogan's son. Great to see the support from the Hogan family. Yeah. Hulk's first pay-per-view in TNA at Genesis. And it's a fight about oh. Blueprint who's laying out the Brits. Well, it's a big night right here. And that's a big man in Matt Morgan. Heads up. Williams taken into the corner. Oh, God, look at Watch this. these elbows, Pat rights and lefts. Rapid fire, vintage Matt Morgan, vintage, I say. Heard that before. Really? Exactly sure where. <laughs> He's got him taken from Watch behind. Oh! In the back of the neck and then sent face first into the corner, turnbuckles. He bounces off and oh! leads to a pin. And the wow. blueprint thought he had the three right there and thought we would wow. have new tag team champs. Yeah. But Williams able to fight back, headbutt to the gut, and then the European uppercut. Doug Williams coming in, maybe a tad overzealous. Look at that, like maybe a thumb or an index finger to the eye. Look at Williams, oh, flying back elbow. Oh, watch out. <laughs> Talk about flying. Hernandez, big super back shoulder block, but turns right in to the Magnus boot. And speaking of turning right in, how about that clothesline? Not a great way to spend a Sunday night. That was nasty. I don't think he knows what night of the week it is after that clothesline. <laughs> That's a bell ringer. Bodies laying everywhere here. Guys are just starting to get up. Gonna boil down to the blueprint and Doug Williams with Williams connecting with the series of those forearm shots uh -oh. from his knees. Uh oh. Doug Back up to the base, Yo! directly into the choke slam, followed by the cover with both legs hooked in. No, no just wow. two. That was a half a second. That was the, that's called the verge of victory right there. Yeah, man. We almost crowned new tag team champions right there. Look at Madness. What the hell? Got something in mind as he takes Hernandez oh, down off the apron. Boot right into the suplex with Morgan's shoulders down. No, just two. Wow, you gotta, you gotta really give it up for Matt Morgan to kick out of that German suplex. Excellent back arch into a bridge by Doug Williams. Magnus tagged in as legal. Stalking the blueprint. When Morgan's up to his feet, he's right there, but oh, Morgan able to shove oh. him off into the corner, and Williams had something in mind. He was up on top. Yeah, I mean, the the Brits not on the same page for a moment there. Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Doug Williams. Air. Oh, Air Williams there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Looks like he got shot out of a cannon. Supermax with that flying shoulder. Again, the power. Oh, God. Magnus up. Oh, carbon footprint. Carbon footprint pin. Could have new chance. of the Blueprint, Matt Morgan, and Supermax Hernandez. 
And that was what was on display at Genesis as we have new TNA World Tag Team Champions. Let's revisit the action. Yeah, this thing was going back and forth for the most part. I mean, a, a good portion of the match, the British Invasion controlled the challenges. But, but then, the chemistry that we talked about, that I mentioned and you mentioned, of Hernandez and, and Morgan just came out, carpet footprint, we crown new TNA Tag Team Champions. Yeah, the two big men definitely on the same page. Blueprint and Supermax able to put it together when the opportunity was there. Perfect way to follow up that number one contender's win on Impact by getting the victory tonight at Genesis. And as a result, new TNA World Tag Team Champions have been crowned. Whoa, 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 that's Lashley. It's the boss, Bobby Lashley. And well, we talked about him earlier tonight, saying that he refused you know to compete well, you know what else here tonight at Genesis. Where's he going? Where's he going? Bobby Lashley, you got some kind of problem. Yeah, I have a problem. Oh! oh. What is going on in here, he brother? He tried to attack Mr. Bischoff. I was just sticking up for him, sir. I'm very <sighs> sorry. Brother, can you tell I'm overwhelmed? Have you ever felt a little bit crazy? Actually, I'm real crazy? Yes, sir. Like a runaway train? <laughs> okay, well, now you know what I feel like. Okay. You know, brother, don't even worry about that. Because you're going to have your match tonight. I am. You're gonna have your match tonight, and brother, this is gonna be even better. But do me one favor. Please. Anything at all. You I'm need begging you, please. Don't make me crazy. You promise? Yes, you won't make me crazy. No, sir, never. You know what crazy is, right? Yes, sir. I Don't do. make me crazy. Yes, sir, I will not do that. I'm crazy enough for both of us, sir. Good. Well, then take all that craziness, all that hardcore stuff, all that insanity, put it in a little teeny package, and leave it in the locker room, okay? Everybody has to prove themselves here at TNA. I want to see what you're really made of, what you can really do in that ring. Yes, sir. And you're going to have your match tonight. Yes, sir. And I'm not going to let you down. I'm bringing my A game, sir. Ooh, who's it going to be? Who's my opponent going to be? Don't worry about it. Okay. Wait till you see. <sighs> this is going to be even better. Oh, God, I'm so excited. So do me one favor. Yes, sir. Get ready. I'll be ready, sir. I won't let you down, Hulk. I'm going to get ready. Making push ups, sit ups. I gotta make an impression. I wonder who it is. Oh, Hulk Hogan's got somebody in mind to face Abyss later tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a return match scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from London, England, this Wolf. Well, this is the return match, the rematch that Desmond Wolf demanded. Well, I think Desmond Wolf has a. He, I'm just gonna say, who's he has this? a friend. He has a friend with him. Why can't a guy go to the ring with a friend? He could let us know. He, it's Desmond Wolf, this guy. We're lucky he even talks to us. He hardly does. I'm digging the new, uh, the new ring gear that Desmond Wolf is wearing. That's pretty sharp. Desmond Wolf, you know, we talk about certain people, how they're clever and cunning. That's definitely what Desmond Wolf oozes. He exemplifies using his brain, not just his physical abilities. The term that we, that we use, the thinking man's wrestler, Desmond Wolf. Opponent from the streets of Harlem, New York, the Pope, the Angelo, the Talk 
talked about this being a return match, and it is. Back on our January 4, that live three-hour impact special. Hope got the win with wait, the wait, 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 wait. Money drop in oh, the impact on the Genesis. I love it. Money's dropping. Look at all the DNA fans groveling for some dinner, <laughs> for some bucks. Get a job for God's sakes. Groveling for cash in Orlando. <laughs> yeah, happy new year. When the Pope's in the house, the money's dropping. I'm digging it. I don't think the, I don't think the uh, Desmond Wolf is too impressed with the Pope. That goes without saying. Woo! Pope had some interesting comments. The pre-match interview with Christy Hemi. Hope he doesn't really get too overconfident here against Desmond Wolf coming off the win. Wait, wait, who, the Pope? Get overconfident? Yeah. No, not the Pope. The guy talks about himself in third person. <laughs> you should stop doing that, Mike. They <laughs> Well, this should be a hell of a matchup between these two very accomplished wrestlers here in TNA. God, it feels so good to call people wrestlers. Jeez. Look at this. Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff said ah. the tone earlier tonight when it comes to that. And Man. That's Wolf getting some assistance in uh, removing his britches. That's pants, Mike. I'm with you. You sure? Yeah. Yeah, that one got whoop. zipper right, zipper left. Well, I guess she's experienced with zippers. <laughs> Desmond Wolf, well, I'll tell you what, he looks like he's in the zone for sure. It looks well, like the Pope may be slightly distracted here. What's up with that? Yeah, he definitely did. Yeah, he sure is. <laughs> Couldn't agree more with the crowd at the impact zone. Oh, it's kind of Genesis. <laughs> you know, I mean, I would think if you're Desmond Wolf, get, you know, your girl getting disrespected a little bit, that's right in your face, Pope. <laughs> well, I guess. It's like now, Desmond Wolf getting control of the head and arm of, oh, of the Pope. Pope's got really, really good hands. Quick with his hands and obviously his feet too. Oh, wow. Pope leaves his feet, connects with the power shot. But that Rock Desmond Wolf you saw him favoring the back of his head as it made contact with the canvas. And the Pope is right on him and, and almost senses here. Oh, uh -oh. That, he can, that he can take advantage of Wolf. Going to go handstand in the corner. Wow, that takes great abdominal strength right there and upper body strength by Desmond Wolf. Both these men have a lot of similarities, you know, as from an athletic standpoint. But you know, Desmond Wolf's more of a type of guy who will try and dissect every part of your body with basic wrestling. Wow! Ah, uh, I tell you what, Desmond Wolf one step ahead of the Pope right there. Went for that handstand in the corner. You saw that he was able to take the Pope and drive him out to the floor. Bad landing there, but he gets right back into it. Oh and my check God! What is? Oh my God. It was almost like he was taking him up for a pile driver, but he's got him hooked in the ropes. Kev, I don't, he dropped. Pope would have dropped Wolf straight down. He'd land right on his head. Good way to crack your skull open. De Niro now from the middle rope goes for the big fist drop and right on target. Directed to the top of the head, gonna go for a cover as he pulls whoa, 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 him back whoa, whoa, whoa. into the pin. Desmond Wolf is a little bit rocked right now. Not moving like he normally moves in a pump. Oh, wait, wait, wait. He's set up right where. Wolf is set up right where Pope needs him. Here we go. Oh! Ooh, look like Pope Land looks like Pope maybe uh, tweaked his knee a bit there. Slid through right across the back of Wolf, landed out on the oh. floor. And Wolf what? just caught him with a shot, didn't he? Like an elbow right into that leg and knee. Well, that's, see, that's how Wolf is. That's how clever he is. Once, you know, he once he saw that. I know what I'm doing. 
I ain't no dummy! Clever and calculating, maybe, huh? Yeah, calculating for sure. Maybe Wolf was playing possum there for a moment. And uh, knew that Pope would kind of go for something crazy and tweak his knee on the outside. And Wolf was smart enough to zone right in on that knee that was wow. tweaked. Oh, God. The impact of that. I mean, it was a basic snap mare. But right. he did it so close to the ropes Correct. that you saw that whiplash effect with the well, body of the Pope. And again, we're going to see Look it again this. here. Look at that. how innovative is that? We're seeing Desmond Wolf, how he's utilizing the ring ropes, which are cable ropes, which are extremely tight in our new four-sided ring as a weapon. That's what Wolf is doing. Very innovative. Talked about the styles of these two individuals, Taz. I was going to point out that Desmond Wolf, more of the submission expert, yeah, as, and, as, and, and he can he has so many varied yeah. submission moves. We're seeing well, one of them here with this single leg crab. That's a single leg Boston crab with a figure four leg, a uh, figure four hand grip lock on the knee there, and it's a great way to really rip apart someone's knee. I hate to be that graphic, but again, we're seeing Pope trying to get to that bottom rope. There's basically not a lot of ways out of this hold. The Pope had the wherewithal to get to the bottom rope to break the hold. Wolf had no choice but to let go. Now, Wolf, this is where Wolf's most dangerous. When he knows you're hurt and there's a, a joint in your body, either an elbow, a shoulder, or a knee in this case. God, look at that. He He's, will just take it apart. He just has that ca oh, that, that catalog of, that. of submission moves. So unique. Oh, God almighty. Are you kidding me or what? He's twisting up Pope like a pretzel. And stomps down on the free leg so that De, De Niro really can't fight back. Look at that, that drop toe hold. And, and, but, and, but as he goes for the drop toe hold, he scissors both legs and then comes back up and and maintains the grip on the one side. But uses his legs to do it. And that's, again, he's not just, and now look at this, this bridge puts more pressure. He's bridging Wolf is, and he's putting more pressure on the knee. Oh, the joint portion of the knee where, kind of like the patella and the, the ligaments kind of meet up. And you, you even notice that when, when Wolf puts on a submission hold like that, he, he maintains that separation from the Pope so that the Pope can't reach back and connect with yeah. punches. Now that time, there's the opportunity for the Pope to try and catch a couple of shots. Yeah, listen, I've had my share of knee operations, and I, you know, I'm telling you right now that, you know, when you have that kind of pain and anguish in your knee, it's tough to have any kind of oomph behind those punches. Let's see, Pope has to be careful not to get on, lay on his back, because referee Slick Johnson will count him, you know, count him for a pin. Hope's in, uh, hope's in great danger here in this match, Mike, in my opinion. Well, Desmond Wolf wanted this match as a proving ground Look at that. Look to at prove this. that he was superior Jeez. to the Pope, even though the Pope got the win on wow. impact. As we see now, he's got the legs hooked. He's got the, he's, he's got the neck he is just, of the Pope cinched. This guy's special, in my opinion, Desmond Wolf. God, and I, I'm a fan of straight-up wrestling, and that's exactly what Desmond Wolf just is. He will just stretch you to death. It's like an STF type hold here, but at the same time, notice the weight positioning of Desmond Wolf. It's put, putting all of his weight directly on the back of the Pope. Yeah, well, his whole body sideways, Wolf, on the middle of the body of, of, uh, of the Pope, and Pope has no option but to try to get to that bottom rope again to break this hold. If he can make it, getting choked before out. he passes out and just see that, just that desperation reach right at the end to barely grip the rope and get the break. I don't think Pope would even be able to stand up right now. It seems like he's trying, and Pope's loaded with heart and resiliency. Look at the pain you can see in Pope's face. Again. Just dissecting, you see that, that yeah. cross chop, that Mongolian style cross chop in the corner. Well, you know, it's just Pope is, the reason why I said he's in grave danger is not just because of this nasty offense we're seeing by Desmond Wolf, but Wolf is like, you know, like a shark who senses blood in the water and. Oh! God. This match might have to be stopped. I don't, you know, I don't think that Pope's going to be able to continue here. Had the full power behind the drop kick, and again, it was directed right at the knee that we saw him tweak earlier. And the Pope using the ring ropes just to get back up to his base. 
That uppercut forearm shiver right to the face, that European type uppercut. Oh, Pope <laughs> fights back out of the corner with a right that landed. And a chop that did as well. Gonna try and turn it around. Yeah, Pope bringing it right now. Oh, that forearm just dropped. Might have KO'd. Might have KO'd the Pope. As the Wolf telling everyone they're wankers. Not quite sure what that is, but I don't think it's a complimentary comment. Wanker. Pope again using the ring ropes just to try to get back up to his feet, but Wolf right on him, going to elevate him, position him up on the top. Well, it's just defenseless right here, uh, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure is. Is he going to go for the oh, tower? Yeah, might be going for the tower on London. If he hit, oh, look at it. He was able, Pope was able to get to his feet. That one came out of nowhere. Sure did. Let's Pope. see if he can follow up. That Not one power move is good. You gotta get hey. more than that. Caught him at the clothesline. It's right back to the offense. Here he goes. It's gut check time and, and uh, oh man. Pope is just showing it right now. That was impressive. Spiked him, dropped him directly on the head. Now Wolf all of a sudden rock. Let's see if the Pope's got enough momentum here to go for the cover. Drapes the arm and again the ring awareness. Yeah, get to that bottom Never rope. panic. No. Referee puts in the count, and at two, he knew exactly where he was at and got the leg on the rope for the break. And Wolf, by that move by, uh, by the Pope, got driven on his skull. And now again, but it's tough for the Pope to follow up. Oh! Because of the problem with, with his knee. And now what? That's the... the hell is this? Oh! God! Tell you what, I got a funny feeling that the Pope might be uh, heading to see an orthopedic surgeon uh, at some point this week, man. This is not good. Well, it's just so interesting to watch these, oh, 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 oh. these new, the these innovative moves with the leg wrapped around the rope. Look, look at Wolf just, he placed, he placed, oh my God, he placed just the knee. Cont contorting the body. Oh God, stop him, Rip. <laughs> Ripley's got to put in the count here. He's gonna break his back. He's gonna rip his knee out. Oh, that's painful to watch. I'm not kidding. I gotta give Pope credit. A lot of guys would have thrown the towel and now and just would say they couldn't you know finish this match. Well, Wolf we'll better be careful here. Don't get himself disqualified. Able to get that power and strength digging down deep, but you see when he hit the move, immediately favoring the leg and the knee. Well, how, how you know he has to? It's just after what Wolf has done to the Pope's knee. We talked about amazing right at the top of this show, feeding off the 12th man our audience. Seems like the Pope's doing that. Oh! Series of shots. Oh, man. Man, that one really caught him. That one was on the button, on the jaw. I'm not kidding, it was. That snap down, underarm spin, and that snap down. Yeah. Just take your shoulder right out of yeah. the socket. You've seen Wolf do that to so many opponents. And you see how he just, he doesn't, no second guessing. Wolf just goes right in for the kill again with that single leg Boston cramp on a counter. Yeah, quick counter, roll up here. Counter. Got the small package. Does he get it? Oh. Excellent counter by the Pope. Pope maybe again. Backslide maybe. Pope trying to go get a backslide. I don't think Wolf. Uh, I don't think Pope could put the weight on his knee. Oh, right on the knee there. Another, Another small, small package. package. Here we go. Quick pick. Got him. Oh. No, that one was really close. Slick Johnson says no, not three. The well, Pope's trying to get a quick one, and I don't blame him. The man is hurt. Bam! Oh, man, it's spinning back elbow by Desmond Wolf. Another one of those European uppercuts in the corner. Now here comes Desmond Wolf. Who's fresh as a daisy. Oh! Went for the shot. Pope moves out of the way. Well, what's this? What's this? Oh, oh my God. God! Snaps the head and the neck right into the pin, right into the cover, but no, not able to get three. 
telling you, the Pope is just told before about gut check time. Pope is showing that. Well, he has had to in light of of the moves that we've seen from Desmond Wolf. Going to go handstand once again, and wow, leaves okay. himself wide open for the sure Pope did. here. Sure did. Now what? How can he hold him up with all that? Pope with the knee issue. Oh! That flapjack power bomb might get him. Oh! Now so starting to sense that frustration on the part of the Pope D'Angelo De Niro. Thought he was going to get the three count. Well, now, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at this. The Pope is. Knee pads coming down. Could be time for the DDE. Well, I don't know if that. I don't know if. I hope that's a good idea after what we've seen happen to the knee of the of Pope by Wolf. Can't just can't, you can see that. He tried to get it gone. Instead, the big lariat and oh! the pin. Here is your winner, Desmond Wolf. Well, it's not often we see that completely vile and nasty lariat clothesline by Desmond Wolf. But when he brings it out, good Lord, it is impactful. But the Pope couldn't run, man. He went for the, for the DDE, and he couldn't run because of the issues with his knee. Let's go back. Let's revisit what went down. There you saw the Pope on the offense. But how about those very unique snap mayors using the ropes? Oh, I'll talk yeah. about unique. How about submission, submission moves? This is. Uh, the submissions that Desmond Wolf pulled out here. But, I, I, you know, in my opinion, you really got to just give nothing but respect to the Pope after what he endured by the attack, re relentless attack by Wolf on the knee of the Pope, but many times, many close near falls by the Pope, and at the end of the day, going for that DDE might not have been smart by Pope, who got drilled with that clothesline. Went for that D'Angelo De Niro Express, and didn't pay off. No. Wow, what a newsworthy night we have had. Yeah. Two new champions crowned already, Tara the knockout champ, and new TNA World Tag Team Champions as well. And what about this? I mean, who is Hulk Hogan have set up for Abyss tonight? I mean, can it be the man, or the person, I should say, we assume it's a man, that Hulk Hogan said is going to have major impact in this company and could be a world champion someday? Entirely possible. We talked about the new Tag Team Champions in the Blueprint and Super Max. And speaking of tag teams, well, Beer Money Incorporated, they get their wish. They're going to face Kevin Nash and Who's well, his partner going to be? Well, it's either going to be Six Pac or Scott Hall. I, know they were, I think they were playing a game of rock, paper, scissors to see who, who's going to be Nash's partner. I mean, I don't get it. Let's talk, about that, the contract let's talk about that World Heavyweight title matchup. AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, all the pressure's on Kurt. I cannot wait to see these two men have at it again. The pressure is on Kurt. This is his last opportunity, Kurt Angle's last opportunity in 2010 for AJ Styles' his TNA Heavyweight title. Must-win situation for Kurt Angle. Do we have JB ready? Let's right. send it to Jeremy Borash. It's JB, Jeremy Borash. We are off and running here tonight at Genesis and yet to come. The World Heavyweight Championship title match. AJ Styles defense against Kurt Angle. What exactly do you think you're doing? My job. <laughs> now, it was your job. So your job is whatever I tell you your job is. And quite frankly, Jeremy, uh, I don't think your head's in the game. I think this whole Mick Foley thing has got you all scrambled. Um, so until further notice, I'm going to be taking you off television for a while. Good job. Oh, don't worry about it, kid. I'll find something for you to do. There's catering. You know, somebody's got to drive the ring truck around. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. Christy? The lovely Ms. Hemi? You did what? Thank you. Oh. Hmm. Ric Flair. Ric Flair in TNA. Before January 4th, this just seemed like a dream for wrestling fans around the, around the world. And now here it is. You're here. A dream come true. The one, the only, nature boy, Ric Flair, here in TNA. So now that you're here, what, what's going to be your role? Well, Christy, I couldn't have said it better. The one and the only Nature Boy is here at TNA. And why I'm here right now is my business. When I'm ready to tell the world why, 
I'll let them all know. But all you need to know is right now, the Nature Boy goes, woo, we're the greatest talent in the world is. And that's vice versa. Remember, Nature Boy, TNA, side by side. Woo! Now with me and Park heard that Hulk Hogan was gonna be here, that means one thing to us, big paychecks, big sold out arenas, and big parties. It doesn't work that way anymore, brother. When the hell did you turn so corporate? Oh boy, that's Eric Bischoff. Everybody has got to earn their position in this company. Easy, hear you loud and clear. Here comes the band, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, Sean Waldman. Oh God, it was a three on two attack, a three on two beat down of the band on Beer Money. We are the best tag team in wrestling today. And we don't appreciate being jumped from behind. We want Hall and Nash at Genesis. All right, let's see if Eric Bischoff gives Beer Money what they want. The band's back together. You know, the thing is, we're not just going to be playing our greatest hits. We've got all new material. I guess Beer Money's going to get their wish. This is what they asked. The band in full effect. Root tries to fight back with this three on two. This is too tough for Beer Money. They're outnumbered. We have the security troops. We have TNA referees coming out in full force to try and get this chaotic situation under control. Be really careful what you wish for, because the next round is on me. Guys. I just don't know what I'm going to do with you. I can only think of one thing that makes sense to me. At Genesis, it will be Scott Hall, Kevin Nash against Beer Money. How about that? Beer Money, Inc. seeks revenge against Scott Hall and Big Sexy Kevin Nash. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Genesis continues with the following tag team contest. Scheduled for one fall with a certain time limit. Introducing representing the band, Six Pack and Big Sexy Cup Ash. Well, that's Six Pack. That's not <laughs> Scott Hall. Yes, we know the results of the rock, paper, scissors between Six Pack, Sean Waldman, and Scott Hall. And how about the ranks of the broadcast team? Just thin with JB being taken off TV until further notice by Eric Bischoff. Change is in the air. Well, he's got the opportunity. Well, let's see. <laughs> Gonna start it off with Storm and yeah, six pack known, of course, for the very yeah, well, kicks. This, the kicks, yes, yeah, six, six pack will bring those kicks, but you know what? James Storm, he's just <laughs> more like a ballroom brawler that can get it done in a ring too, and you can see that Storm is a little bit amped up right here. 
Got control of the arm of Six Pac. Oof. And Storm, look at that nice neck breaker. Right into the cover and the cowboy on top, but Six Pack able to power out before that three count. And now we see the double team move from Beer Money, Storm and Root together. Oh. And you know, yeah, you know, we talked earlier, Doran. Oh man, no! Oh. Big knee drop. Here's the follow Got cover it. and the follow two count. We talked earlier, Doran Hernandez and Matt Morgan's victory on becoming the new TNA Tag Team Champions about chemistry. And you know, obviously, the history between Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and X Pac, oh, Six Pac, I should say, goes back years. But they haven't tagged the whole time together. Beer money, talk about chemistry. They're a, a cohesive unit. We see from outside, little assist from Six Pack as Kevin Nash has turned this match in favor of the oh. band. And I think Kevin Nash maybe had some beer spit in his face prior to this bout. I'm not sure that we, that we caught it or not. I think beer money left their mark on Big Sexy. Yeah, well, I don't know why you'd want to infuriate <laughs> someone like Big Sexy. He's a large, dangerous individual. Well, that clothesline had no effect, did it? Root oh. again to the well. And yeah, the tries for the clothesline once again, and zero effect. Look at this, just the pure size and power in Kevin Nash. He's loaded with credibility to boot, but he thought of that. Root leaves his feet, connects, goes for the cover. Well, yeah, I was kind of surprised to see Root able to Yo, knock Kevin Nash off his feet. Making a wish here. Oh! Not a good way for Whoa! Big Drop toe hold for six pack. Well, big sexy. That might not be too sexy after that. You saw the effects of the landing by Waltman as. James Storm, well, not showing too much sympathy here to Big Sexy Kevin Nash. Well, I'm not surprised. No, both Beer Money, uh, Storm and Rude, they're two, uh, you know, <laughs> some wild, um, wild dudes. Oh, man, wow. what a shot. Good Lord, Storm just cracked Storm the just six pop. I'll do it one more time for the hat trick. I'll say it a third time in a little while. <laughs> Why, Puck? But you see Six Pack able to get back up on the apron and get the tag in spite of being on the receiving end of that brutal shot from Storm and see if he can get some redemption here. Nice vertical suplex leaving his feet. Yeah, doesn't Six go for Pac the pin at all. Instead that quick snapping patented leg drop that he's so famous for. And hey, I, <laughs> I've been in the ring years ago with Six Pack and been on the end of that. The other end of that really fast lightning lock, lightning like, easy for me to say, leg drop, and it's not fun. Oh. Spin kick, that's not fun either. Wow, oh, right on the, the bridge of yeah. the nose of James Storm. No confidence problem in six pot. Never has been. That's what being the band's all about, isn't it? Hey, you gotta have that swagger, you gotta be conceited, you gotta have that arrogance, in my opinion. That's what makes you, a, you know, a contender, a top guy in this industry. And speaking of top guys, look at these knees here by a very large guy in Kevin Nash. It's kind of interesting watching backstage the difference between Kevin Nash and Scott Hall and Six Pack just in terms of the way that they were reacting. Yeah, well, I mean, look, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what the situation is. Who knows what's going through the mind of, of the band, these three men. But we do know that. Well, you know, Hall and Six Pac do currently do not have contracts here in TNA. See a different level of maturity, though, between the three? Yeah, I think so. I, think, I have to say that <laughs> Nash is definitely the more mature one. A series of shots, knee after knee, but in the corner there, and the Cowboy now has really just been beaten down by the band. Rude going to try and get the attention of the referee, probably not going to help him any here. And the tag is in. Kevin Nash is legal. Waltman has got him trapped in the corner. There goes Storm flying across. Oh, quick oh. follow clothesline is right on target, right Ke on the money. Kevin Nash is, oh, he couldn't wait to, oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna ride him in the corner Bronco Buster style. Robert Roode has gotta be just dying to get in that ring and help his partner 
and start laying it to Nash and six pop. At the same time, the band doesn't want to give Beer Money Incorporated that kind of an opening. They want to shut him down, and the experienced Kevin Nash going to take Storm over to oh, their yeah. side. Well, you know, Kevin Nash, you know, he picks his spots. Oh. He picks his spots, side and he might, he might have it there. Ooh. Picks his spots in a match, does Nash. That's being a veteran. That's being a, you know, a guy that knows his way around a ring. You don't rush into anything. It's not his first rodeo is basically what I'm saying. Got Storm set up. Position in the corner for the overhand rights. Going to turn it over to six pack. Here he comes. Oh no, six pack. Got something to mind you. Watch out. Oh! That time, Bronco Buster caught nothing but turnbuckle. Rude, capacity crowd here at the impact zone for Genesis, cheering on Storm to try and get him to the far side to try and well, get the yep. tag in. Can Storm tag in Rude? He needs to, Storm needs to get the tag. Oh, oh, oh my God, right on that. Our new rampway here, and Rude landed very hard. We're talking about this rock, paper, scissors situation. We saw between Scott Hall and Six Pac, you, you just, you wonder how Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff might react to something like that. Not that quite sure. Pay -view. Not quite sure. Oof! Double knees to the chest A big sexy Kevin Nash. That might be just what beer money needs, but Nash right there for oh, the yeah. tag. Well, X -Pac. Six Pac in. I said it That's again. the hat Six trick. <laughs> Six Pac and Nash, they're just making those frequent tags. The old Taz trifecta. <laughs> well, here comes One Rude. way to get the tag in. Right through Boom. the legs and an explosive Robert Rude. They're going to connect with the clotheslines. Three of them. Back to back to back. Robert right Rude is on him. fire. He's on fire, baby. Whoa! Big time back body drop. Nash in. And Rude's ready for him. Right hands, big chop, power of Nash. Oh, wow. A lot of boot in the face of Nash. The six pack able to stop Rude in his tracks. Well, watch out. Spine buster plants him. Rude floats over to the pin, but Nash is there to break it up. Good timing by big sexy Kevin Nash to stop Rude from getting the pin on six pack. Rude set for the ride in the corner. Oh! Man from outside. That might be it. That might be it. Storm connects with the boot. Beer money with the double team. Snap over. Six pack with that suplex. I, I don't think Kevin Kevin Nash is crawling. I don't even know if he knows, knows where the hell he's at. Well, what? It's Scott Hall. Well, Scott Hall, the loser in rock, paper, scissors earlier. Coming down the ramp to get a closer view of his bandmates in this tag match. Don't need this kind of distraction. Yeah, See there? Yeah, that's exactly, I think, what Scott Hall obviously had in mind. The timing impeccable on the part of the band. The distraction by Scott Hall coming to ringside. Going to enable Kevin oh. Nash to hit the choke slam and go for the pin and get the... Got him! Oh! <laughs> no! Wow. Oh, what just... Wait. Scott... What is Scott... He just pulled a fan right over the guardrail. Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, come on, Scott. No, no. Oh. oh, Kevin Nash... Oh, Kevin Nash got caught! was trying to restrain Scott Hall and let Kevin Nash by himself be a money capitalizer. Talk about having your attention distracted. We're gonna go back and take another look. Well, the referee has oh, that's, the, that's that last call super kick. Wow. That enabled Rude with momentum to roll through and get the pin as Beer Money Incorporated gets the victory over the band.
Oh, I didn't expect this to go down the way it just went down, I gotta tell you. But congrats, congratulations to Newman. Well, they said they wanted to prove that they were the best tag team in professional wrestling today. They get the win over the band, and they also get some redemption for that backstage beatdown from January 4th. Well, the band definitely not on the same page. Nash doesn't look uh, too happy. Uh, I can't say I blame the guy. It's so, it's so interesting to see here the reactions of big sexy Kevin Nash to six pack and, and Scott Hall. And I'm told, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to send it backstage to Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. Look at this. Can you believe this is still going on with these guys? I had hope for them, man, but I just didn't see it. You know, they are so lucky that I got a full play tonight. But you know what? This coming Thursday, I'm going nose. I'm calling these guys out Thursday. I can't take this anymore. You need to do it. You need to do it. Man. By the way, Hulkster, brilliant move on the whole Abyss situation. I <laughs> mean, really brilliant. Well, I guess we could say, ask not what TNA can do for Hulk Hogan. Ask what Hulk Hogan can do for TNA. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Man, that sounds good. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 30 minute time limit. Introducing first standing six feet eight inches tall. He weighs 350 pounds. He is the monster. Looks like I done crossed the line. You know, folks, I, um, I've read your Twitters, your Facebooks, your emails. I know you people missed me. And quite frankly, I missed myself. And this, this, this next little part is something for the history books, something for, for VHS, for DVD, for Blu-ray, for freaking YouTube. There's only one way to do this, and it goes a little something like this. Weighing in tonight at an absolutely freaking astonishing 235 and one quarter pound. He hails from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh -oh.
Anderson. Wait for it. Wait for it. Anderson. That's pretty cool. That's how you make a TNA debut, isn't it? You're damn right. Mr. Anderson is in TNA. Thank you, Hulk Hogan. Wow. in TNA, it's been just jaw-dropping. Hey, they the, did it again. The stars go where Hulk Hogan goes. His proof is in the pudding. But that's that's the cool news and the great news that Mr. Anderson is here now. The bad news is Mr. Anderson, he's got to face Abyss. An Abyss that was told earlier by Hulk Hogan that he had a chance to go out and prove himself in, in spite of what he did to Bobby Lashley. Oh, oh. Whoa. A little wake up call for Mr. Anderson gets answered by the monster. And that's kind of like a welcome to TNA type deal right there. But Mr. Anderson, very, very you know, crafty guy. And you got to be careful with him, man. He's quick. He'll try and out witch you in there. And that, you know, as we know, Abyss is just more or less straight at you and tries to tear your head off. 6'8, 350, deal with it, Mr. Anderson. Oh, wow, went for that back body drop. Came back to, to really hurt Abyss, but he's able oh. to, to use that 350, that 100 plus pound weight advantage on Mr. Anderson and power him down. Well, we heard Hulk Hogan say earlier directly to the face of Abyss, I want to see you take that crazy, hardcore style, ball it up and put it in the locker room. Go out there and be the wrestler you can be. Show me what you got. Referee tries to get in the way, gets shoved right out of the way by Abyss, and that enables Mr. Anderson to come right back with offense. Well, I'm very familiar with Mr. Anderson. He can straight up go, and right there he went, all right? <laughs> a thrill with a chop right to the chest by the monster Abyss. Now, you recall on, on Impact this past Thursday, Hulk Hogan talking about this individual who would debut, who would be a part of Genesis, and he oh. called Mr. Anderson's potential just unlimited. I agree. I, I agree completely with Hulk Hogan. I just, how could you not? I'm very familiar with, with, with Mr. Anderson, and I've seen him, you know, seen him go, and he just, no! Oh! He has a certain style about him. He's one step ahead of his opponent, usually. He really uses his brain during a match. Nasty strikes by Mr. Anderson, debuting right here in TNA at Genesis. And Abyss has so many things going through his mind at this point. Oh, as he's clipped from behind the chop block. Well, you notice the intensity in that chop block. The intensity on every kick and every punch that Mr. Anderson brings. And that's the level that you need to be to be not just a great wrestler, but a champion. Think of everything that Abyss has, has been thinking about here. The attack on Lashley, the fact that oh. Hulk Hogan told him to go out and prove himself. And remember, he said, put the hardcore gimmicks on the back burner. Right, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying earlier. And, and you know, that, that forces Abyss maybe to get out of his comfort zone a little bit. And I think that's what Hulk Hogan tried to do with Abyss. Not to put Abyss behind the eight ball, but to, let's see what he has as a straight-up wrestler. And so far, Abyss has had a pretty good show of himself, except for that part right there. Anderson outside with Abyss. This is one way. You know, you know when, when, when Hulk Hogan's telling Abyss no hardcore style, he means no barbed wire baseball bat, no thumbtacks, no chairs, no, no weapons, you know? Just go out there with your two, you know, your four limbs and just go. Let's watch you wrestle is what right. Hulk Hogan wants to see from Abyss. And Anderson wrapping the arm of the monster around that steel post. Well, yeah, you know, again, that's innovative, and Anderson right there, breaking the count. Referee, so he, you know, not, doesn't get counted out. <laughs> well, he hasn't changed that. That overconfident style of Mr. Anderson hasn't changed. 
Watch Grabs a steal right there from the ringside area. Says to the crowd, watch this. Going to wind up for a shot, and Abyss able to kick the chair out of his hands. Look at these massive right hands by Abyss in Anderson's head. You know, it was Mr. Oh, Mr. Anderson who tried to incorporate that chair into this match, but to no avail. Oh! And drives Abyss directly into that, the, the turnbuckle in the corner. Let's go, let's go, get it, get Just back. measuring him, now gonna go outside. Well, Referee gonna, gotta put in the count here, but Anderson outside using the boot right on the face. Notice how everything Mr. Anderson do is calculated. He, you know, he picks his spot and he brings it hard. And that's what you need to do. No wasted motion. No, no, he doesn't rush into anything. Every offensive move Anderson does has a purpose. It's got a meaning and it's got an effect as we are seeing because he's got a 350 pound monster down on his hands and knees. And then we're seeing, you know, Mr. Anderson control a bit here with a hammerlock. Whoa, 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 Oh, shoulder first into the turnbuckle. Gonna try and roll him up out of the corner. Had that momentum to get him through, but boy, it's just so tough when you've got someone who's six foot eight, the size of the legs of Abyss to keep him down for three with that roll up out of the corner. Yeah, but you see, you know, Anderson's doing the right thing here. Get an arm bar, get a submission, wide base by Anderson. Got a nice lock on that arm bar, controlling the gigantic Abyss. Big man trying to get back up to his feet, using the crowd here. Get that adrenaline rolling, and there goes Anderson to the ropes. Oh, oh shoulder <laughs> block, but did you notice where yeah, it was directed? Right into the shoulder, and That's Anderson pounced off uh, like in a wall. And that flying arm bar by Mr. Anderson might get the win here. Follows up with the cover, but not able to get the three. Well, again, you just see the, the size of Abyss just trying to keep him down for the three count. It's a full-time project. Absolutely. And again, like I said, Mr. Anderson not rushing into anything. Version of a top wrist lock. Again, controlling the monster abyss. It's really what he's done ever since he he injured the hand and, and arm the shoulder of abyss. He's done absolutely that. Just control him. Yeah, relentless offense. You got an injury there, exploit it. Abyss back up, gonna try and back him into the corner. Oh, nice. Wow, digs down deep to get that, it's like a, the, the strength, whatever he had left. A shoulder to, throw right there. To toss him. Yeah, it's a, a nice shoulder throw by the massive Abyss, and oh, a little overzealous running into a boot by Mr. Anderson. Oh, speaking of boots, look at that one. Anderson dropped with the big abyss boot. Now gonna try and shoot him across and does into the corner. This is the time that abyss needs to keep the offense Here rolling. Here he comes, Here there it is. 350 <laughs> on the way like a freight train. Oh man. Mr. Anderson is. Side slam. Yeah, and into the pin. Might be done, oh. Getting a little upset is abyss. Thought he was gonna get the victory right there. Motions to the crowd. He's gonna try and go for the choke slam here when Anderson gets back up to his feet. Just using the ring ropes to get back up. Hey, can all these stand up? Watch out. Got goozled. That's step one. Before step two, Anderson fights him off with kicks. Oh my God, look at what shock ease. treatment got him up in the shock treatment Rick backbreaker, eyes, but Rick. Anderson Rick. uses the shortcut. Nothing wrong with that. Got to get out of that shock. Oh, wow. man. Hangman style neck breaker. Wow, that was effective. Wow, well, I tell you, Abyss looking good here. Several near falls. Nice offensive attack. High impact moves by Mr. Anderson. And Abyss is able to kick out several times. Perched up on that middle rope, stalking Abyss. And when he turns around. Uh oh, uh -oh. yeah, he got goozled. And Look at this. that time he connected with the choke slam. Drops down, got the leg hook for the pin. <laughs> Mr. Anderson got driven down almost into the frozen tundra. Little Packer reference.
Well, he's from Green Bay, Mike. I understand. <laughs> now you see a pissed wall. He was slowly stalking Mr. Anderson again. A high impact right hand just driven into the face of Abyss. Power of Abyss as he's able to fire him off. Anderson went for the float over, but no what success. A shock, shock treatment here, Mike. See if he catches him this time. Well, Anderson fighting for his life. Well, he's up in the back, oh but he still God. got caught in that shock Holy. treatment backbreaker. Did you see the whiplash motion of Anderson's neck? He's done. They hooked the pin. Had the oh, he did not have great weight positioning on the pin that time. No, he didn't. He didn't at all. Because if you put 350 right on top of Anderson it's, after that shot, that's why he's going for it again, Mike. Back to right. the well. To your point, that's why Mike Abyss went for the pin cover again. That shock treatment was so, you know, impactful. Abyss might have felt something for himself. And again, thus far, we haven't seen Abyss have to resort to any weapons, but maybe I spoke yeah, that, too yeah, soon. Yeah, I think that's about to change. Oh, wait a minute. Steel chair going to be brought into play. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, Got to wonder what Hulk Hogan might think about this. I don't, I don't know if Abyss is thinking about that, Ryan. I don't think he cares. Going to use the chair. Oh, wait, wait, what is... Is Anderson? The hell? He's got, looks like nuts. He's got brass nuts, Anderson. Well, the referee has got the chair away from Abyss. I think Abyss maybe had second thoughts. Probably thought, oh, oh! And he just got nailed with the brass nuts from Anderson. Right into the pin, the cover, and he got the win. I think you're right, Mike. I think that Abyss had second thoughts on using that chair because he can't remember what Hulk Hogan had said. But who would have known that Mr. Anderson on his shocking debut here, the shocking appearance, and he pulls out brass knucks and just drills Abyss. So we had that close-up shot of Mr. Anderson going into his trunks to take the brass knucks out to get the foreign object, the weapon and to use it at the same time you can just see everything going through the head the mind of abyss and he had those second thoughts almost like he double clutched not sure if we caught it on camera or not taz but i saw it from here yeah i did too I, yeah you're right the winner of the match ah. Ah. opinion I think that uh Mr. Anderson's got a bright future here in TNA gonna take another look at what went down in the TNA debut at Genesis of Mr. Anderson see him squaring off here against the monster well it definitely was a physical confrontation a physical contest to say the least and you know Abyss had to kind of not resort to using any weapons any you know baseball bats wrapped in barbed wire and and then you see right there the chair, and I think that, like you said, Abyss had the epiphany, well, I can't use this thing. I mean, I gotta go by what Hope Hogan said. But who would've thunk it? Mr. Anderson pulls out Brass Knucks, gets the victory, and drills Abyss in the face with him. Well, I think it was that hesitation on the part of Abyss that really cost him, Taz. Mr. Anderson celebrates uh, the victory. It's here great to see him. Debut. I'm happy to see Mr. Anderson back here. Well, not back here, but see him again. It's very cool. I'm a big fan. Main event time on deck here tonight at Genesis. This is what we've been waiting for. This is what we've been anticipating. AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, TNA World Heavyweight Championship hangs in the balance, but so many interesting little sidebars to this well, main event. What we've been saying it all night, the pressure is on the challenger. The pressure's on Kurt Angle. And if anyone, can deal with pressure. It's a 13-time World Heavyweight Champion. Hulk Hogan saw this matchup January 4, our live Impact Special, and he said at the first ever pay-per-view of the Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff regime, the era here in TNA, I want to see it one more time. It was epic. It was an epic battle. I have a funny feeling tonight's going to be epic again. Just my opinion. Angle and Styles, it's up next. 
TNA has officially rewritten history. And at the focal point of that history-making day, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, raise the bar to an ultimate level that the TNA fans have never seen before. We have to know, can AJ Styles do it again? The fans deserve to see this match one more time. Now being the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, when I won that, and I, I, I can't, I can't put it into words how special that was for me. AJ Styles is one of a kind. He has a style that nobody can really compare it to. You can't really compare AJ Styles to anybody else. He's explosive, he's exciting to watch, he has a lot of great technique, he has a lot of big, big dangerous moves. I think when AJ Styles won the TNA World Heavyweight title, he removed a lot of the doubts. People had questioned him in the past, uh, they knew he was terrific as an X Division competitor, as a tag team wrestler, but this was his chance to prove that he deserved to be World Heavyweight Champion. When it comes right down to it, it's who wants it bad enough. And I think we both want that world title bad. I would think that if you have to give an advantage to either Kurt Angle or to AJ Styles, I would have to go advantage champion. I just think that this is AJ Styles' time. Winning the TNA World Heavyweight title uh, would just be that feather in my cap to to, to show, you know, what kind of heart I have. If you think you're gonna come in there, in that rink, and take my belt away from me, you're sadly mistaken. When I go out there January 17th at Genesis, I'm gonna put everything on the line. Every bit of heart I have, all the emotion I have, everything I have in my body, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there, I'm gonna lay it on the line, and by the time the match is over, I will have nothing left. I don't know that AJ Styles is the best athlete in professional wrestling. Uh, that's not for me to decide. I do go out there and uh, do what I can to win matches. You know, and uh, do I rely on my athletic ability? Sure I do. Kurt Angle being the best wrestler in the world today. I don't hate AJ. I don't have any bad feelings toward AJ. I respect him. Uh, I, I fear him. He's that good. But there is something deep inside of me that wants to prove, not just to AJ, not just to the fans, but to myself, that I am still the best wrestler in the whole entire world. The main event between Kurt Angle and the phenomenal AJ Styles will determine the best wrestler in the world today. You know, this is a double-edged sword for Kurt Angle. In 2010, this will be his last shot at AJ Styles. Two of professional wrestling's best will compete for the world championship. The world will be watching when Kurt Angle and the phenomenal AJ Styles wage war one-on-one. -on -one. Hulk Hogan, Eric Bischoff, they told us earlier tonight, it's time to put the wrestling back into sports entertainment. And to me, this world title main event embraces that philosophy just perfectly. Well, let's take a look right here at the tail of the tape. I mean, you see similar size by both these wrestlers. I mean, Kurt's got a body weight advantage. You know, Styles Clash is the finishing maneuver for the champion AJ Styles. Angle slam and or the ankle lock is the finishing maneuver of the challenger. Here's the bullet points to preview our main event. We mentioned this earlier when Hulk Hogan watched AJ and Kurt compete for the World Championship back on January 4. The new TNA boss, he knew a rematch had to main event his first pay-per-view. And we have been fortunate to witness this incredible series of matches between these two. No less an authority than Hulk himself referenced them as the two best wrestlers in the business today. Nobody thrives on pressure like Kurt Angle. From the Olympic gold medal win to the 13 reigns as world heavyweight champion, Kurt needs to prove himself again tonight. Hogan decreed, winner else, Angle's final shot at AJ's title in 2010. That's pressure. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at is the highest level of being focused. A 13-time world heavyweight champion, an Olympic gold medalist, a world-class athlete, international superstar, and all the pressure in the world is on my man, Kurt Angle. This is his last shot at AJ's title. Can he pull it off? Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Genesis main event of the evening. It is for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, scheduled for one fall with a 60-minute time limit. 
Introducing first the challenger, he is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is professional wrestling's only Olympic gold medalist. He is Kurt Angle's in the zone, man. He is in the zone. We talked earlier about thriving under pressure. Certain athletes do that. Certain fold under pressure. You win an Olympic gold medal with a broken neck. I think that qualifies you as thriving under pressure. That's what Kurt Angle, he did in Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight in Orlando, Florida, he looks to once again become TNA World Heavyweight Champion. And there is the TNA Heavyweight Champion. AJ Styles, man, he's all about pride, honor, dignity. Passionate champion. Worked his tail off to get where he is. And I'll tell you, man, he is damn proud of where he's at in his life right now. Four months as TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Won it back at no surrender in September. And tonight, the gold goes back on the line. His opponent from Gainesville, Georgia. Here's the TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World. The phenomenal AJ Styles. We've been focusing on the pressure for Kurt Angle being that it's his final chance at AJ's title in 2010 as, as Hulk Hogan decreed. But there's got to be pressure on the shoulders of the TNA World Heavyweight Champion AJ Styles as well, Taz. She's damn right. <laughs> AJ Styles has got to face Kurt Angle. He's familiar with that task, AJ is. You know, it can make for a long night. Kurt Angle is all about credibility. He's all about being locked in the zone right now. But AJ Styles, is just that the monitor that he carries of being phenomenal. AJ Styles is phenomenal. These two have had some absolute Matt classics in the past, and we would certainly anticipate that that's going to be the case again tonight at Genesis. TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt. You saw AJ plant the kiss right on that World Heavyweight title. Oh, yeah, that, there it is right there. That's what it's about. I mean, and if, uh, you know, sure. AJ gives a kiss to his title right now because by the end of this deal here, that title might not be his anymore. Big match feel here in the impact zone. You can sense the electricity in anticipation of our TNA World Heavyweight title match in our Genesis main event. And I'm getting goosebumps right now, I swear to God, this is cool. Oh, it kind of seems a little bit like Angle's got maybe a little bit of a home field advantage, but I got a funny feeling that could change. <laughs> you know the way AJ goes, right? Well, you watch AJ Styles and both his, his in-ring ability, Taz, the way he carries himself, you can't help but really like the phenomenal AJ Styles and appreciate well, look, if you're the, the incredible yeah. ability that he has. If you're a fan of athleticism, if you're a fan of someone who is just a tremendous, tremendous athlete, a great wrestler, then how do you not like AJ Styles? You get that stamp of approval from Hulk Hogan as these two being the two best professional well, wrestlers in the world today. Well, that's just be Top careful. That. You, you got to be careful here if you're AJ. I don't know if you want to get into that wrestling game or a mat game with someone like Kurt Angle. Well, I would think that... I'll tell you that from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, you've I'll been in there you. with Kurt before. Yeah, and several times. Well, there you go. Well, our live audience here in the Impact Zone kind of split right now. Sort of a taste great, less filling. Let's go Angle, let's go AJ, the crowd yeah. response. Oh, Kurt just shoots that single leg right there. Once he shoots that single leg, I mean, there's no choice but to go down. AJ able to use the free leg there to kick away. The eyes of Kurt Angle tell the story. On, 
Yeah, AJ is going to try and out wrestle Kurt. Well, you know what? If you can get control of the wrist and the arm right there, I mean, go for it. And AJ's got a nice going into kind of like a key lock right there on on on, uh, on Kurt Angle. Very nice. Switching up these hammer locks, reverse after reverse. Standing switch, grabs the side headlock. And I think for, for Kurt Angle, I think his philosophy, his strategy has to be keep AJ down. Yeah. We, we know well, at some point that AJ's going to get that offense rolling. We're well, see some, maybe. Some moves here against Kurt. Uh, maybe, I would assume so. But a little stack and, stack and angle is AJ. I mean, but, you know, Kurt Angle, once he gets with that tremendous grip that he possesses in his fingers and his hands, from all the years as a young boy up into a teenager, up into a man as a wrestler, amateur wrestler I'm speaking of, you know, that the hand strength and grip, the gripping ability of, of Kurt Angle is amazing. And you sensed it right from the start during Kurt's entrance. You looked into his eyes and you said, Kurt Angle is in the zone tonight. Oh, it's just so focused. I tried to have a conversation earlier today with Kurt Angle. He, he, you know, he was behind closed doors talking to no one. I didn't see the dude all day, man. AJ with the side headlock and AJ's got that in tight. Kurt, good way to get him out of there. Kurt's still him able to shove him off. Oh man! AJ had the mo had the momentum rolling from coming off the ropes and able to take Kurt down. Well, Kurt had to kind of stop that momentum. That was a nasty, basic shoulder tackle, but AJ brought it big time. With the level of respect that both the champion and well, the challenger have for each other so apparent. Well, you know, Mike, you don't want to rush into nothing here. You got two very <laughs> phenomenal wrestlers here, pardon the pun, but you got two guys that are just at the peak and they're both great competitors. You don't want to rush into nothing. It's part of the feeling out process, opening minutes of this match. Yeah, nice duck hunting to a goal behind by Kurt Angle. It's just so quick, isn't he? Yeah, he's <laughs> it's just a thing of beauty to watch. Gonna, gonna go try and go suplex here, but AJ. Well, oh fought him off the first time, lands on his feet the second. We, wow, look at this. Well, AJ went for the single leg, instead ends up on it with his shoulders on the canvas. Oh, nice arm drag by Styles. Well, went for the a second one, but Kurt was there. Stops that arm drag, goes for the pin. What a great exchange this is. It's almost as if AJ stands at the ready and says, my confidence well, level is there because I know I can match you hold for hold. Well, when you do something like that, you want to see who can get to a vertical base quicker. That's how you kind of win that thing mentally. And AJ won that thing. You could just sense this thing starting to boil. I mean, you know, when you put water in a pot, it starts to boil up. This thing's starting to bubble. See how cautious AJ is, as is Kurt. It's almost as if they don't want to make that first yeah. mistake well, that's yeah. going to cost them. you got to be defensive. Now, old school Greco, Grecon, help me out here. Greco, Greco Roman, Roman knuckle, knuckle lock. lock. Thank you. For those of you <laughs> scoring at home. <laughs> old school move right there to test strength of someone's hands and fingers and wrist. And we see that Kurt maybe won that battle. Oh, but oh, now, AJ's oh, nice. able to roll through. And now all of a sudden, he has control. He's in the dominant position. Yeah, absolutely. How quick is AJ Styles? Are you back rolled into that? Just excellence. Yeah, don't blink. You will miss it. And Kurt able to use the ropes there. No shame in that. Kurt wanted to break that hold. Go to the rope, have the referee break it. Look, look, look at AJ, you talk AJ talk, talking about ropes. It, almost as if he said, Kurt, you had to use the ropes to get the break. Well, AJ talking trash. I like it. Got a nice tight headlock and then maybe going for that shoulder again. Nope. Speed of AJ as he slides through. Flawless. Drops down Flawless. and then extends the leg to connect with the drop kick. Explosive drop kick. And is AJ amped up here tonight or what? Both champion and challenger. So focused. Concentration level so high. Kick between the shoulder blades leads to a pin attempt that barely gets a one count from referee Earl Hebner. Now you see AJ Styles with his knee and a spine of Kurt Angle and well documented, surgically uh, repaired neck of Kurt Angle. Several surgeries on his neck. AJ going in right there. Got the chin lock the cranking knee. on the neck at the same time as he's got the knee between the blades. Well, th not just the blades, but again, like I said, in the spinal cord, upper spine, man, which. Obviously, it's connected to your head and neck. Series of elbow shots to delivered with authority yep. again. Where, it's, where is it directed? 
Uh, look, there is no gray area here, folks. AJ is going after the, you know, the, the kink in the armor, the chink in the armor of, of Kurt Angle, and that's his neck. It's all about taking advantage if there is a weakness in your opponent, and that's what we're seeing from the TNA World Heavyweight Champ. Just teeing off. AJ just teeing off on Angle. Brings Kurt out of the corner with purpose. Oh, God. And you saw why. Backbreaker across the knee leads to a cover, but Kurt quickly fires okay. that shoulder up. Again, though, AJ pinpointing the spine, the spine of Kurt Angle. With that backbreaker, again, right back to that, that rear chin lock. Pulling back on the, uh, on the neck of Angle. AJ thinking through every move. It's almost as if you can see that he's, he's just that one step ahead and thinking through the move. He knew that when he went for the backbreaker, he had to bring Kurt out towards the middle yes. of the ring. Yes. That's what he did. Here comes Kurt oh, off the oh. ropes, but AJ's there. He's right in his face to catch him with the elbow. A running back elbow, all that momentum knocking Angle out of the ring. Kurt not rushing to get back. Watch out, here comes Styles! Oh. oh! AJ got caught, landed on the apron, and you talk oh about taking advantage. That's what Kurt Angle just did. That's how quick Kurt Angle could just turn that light switch. Just like that. You want to see the complexion of a match turn like that? One mistake, man. That's just exhibit one. One mistake, and boom! Zone's in for the kill. And all of a sudden, he's got the champ wobbly. The champ is down. And Kurt realizes to win the TNA World Heavyweight title, he's got to do it in the ring. Rolls him directly in and goes for the cover, but AJ, who cleared the cobwebs, while he was outside, is, is able to, to, to stop him before the three count. Is Kurt oh, going to go back? Oh, Snapping nice. off the suplex. See how quick, quick Kurt Angle pops his hips to peel off that super high snap vertical suplex. It's that hip motion and that yeah. hip power that's so important, as you would yeah. know. And again, the snap mare into a, a rear gut wrench right here, or a reverse bear hug, some would call it. And you see how Kurt has his weight positioned on AJ's oh, back. Chest. Kurt's upper body, his chest is on, all his weight is on AJ's back, bending him forward, making him breathe, and you see AJ trying to break the grip of, of, uh, of Kurt Angle's hands. Elbows to the head and face rocking, but oh, Kurt still has the awareness Ooh, as man. AJ comes off the ropes. It's a tilt-a-whirl backbreaker. Textbook right there, baby. Watch this pin. Kurt Angle forcing. Forcing AJ Styles to kick out and exert more energy. Oh, man. Kurt in his own mouthpiece came flying out of his mouth. He rushed him into the corner with such well, impact that it went flying. Uh, well, he double-legged him. He double-legged him and used the turnbuckle uh, as, you know, the wall to stop the double-leg. I'll just show you the impact of yeah. that move. Mouthpiece came flying out. I thought Angle's teeth came out. Kurt brings AJ out Ooh, to the middle man. of the ring for the big slam. Hey, that's, that's the, look at that, the relentless. I love that. Pitbull-like covers. Right on him for the pin, but as soon as AJ's able to get the shoulders up, Kurt yeah. immediately back on him for another pin attempt. And to go back to that body slam, it wasn't just your basic body slam. You could see the intent to drive AJ's body almost through the mat. And now again, body scissors here. Brings him out to the middle for the body scissors at the same time. What's going through Kurt's mind here? Is he thinking ahead a couple of moves? Yeah, I think so. I think Kurt realizes now he got, he has AJ where he wants him, on the mat in the middle of the ring. That's where Kurt's most comfortable. Keep him in the middle of the ring and out wrestle him. Go for a submission or two and get a choke, maybe a, an arm bar or the ankle lock. He's trying to think ahead two or three moves at this point to see what could be effective against AJ. Go through the roll next. I think he is. I think AJ's doing the same. AJ's thinking, how do we get out of this? And what do I do to get the momentum in my favor? And that punch might have done it. And that one, too. Angle misses oh. with the clothesline, and AJ right on him. First the punch, then the series back-to-back -back clotheslines. The quick reversal sends AJ off into the ropes, and Kurt just got nailed with the boot. Here comes AJ right back at him. Momentum uh -oh. of the ropes, but caught by oh, Kurt. Wow. Whew, man, what a German suplex. Kurt releasing the throw late. The later you release that throw, the more your opponent lands on his upper, you know, neck and head area. And that's what you do when you want to really you know, hurt a guy bad. You oh, let it go the, late. The velocity of that yes. move, how quickly you snap it off, and the impact that's felt. 
by AJ, who was on the receiving end. You let the, if you let the throw go a little earlier, the guy's gonna land flat. You let it go late, he's gonna land on his head, and that's what we witnessed. Referee Earl having to tell Kurt Angle, you want to put the boots on, fine, but get your hands off the ropes when you do it. It's illegal. Again, he brings him out to the center of the ring for the backbreaker across the knee that leads to the pin. You know, some might say, well, why isn't Kurt Angle when he goes for a cover hooking a leg? What Kurt does, he's kind of has a little bit of a different cover. He drives his forearm across his opponent's cheekbone like a reverse cross face as he pins you. It's almost more effective doing that than hooking a leg. Now you see in here, Angle, knee planted in the back of AJ now as he rear backs on the neck and head with that tight clasp underneath AJ's throat. Talked about AJ getting the offense rolling. That. <laughs> potential to, to, to use high risk moves. And it's really Kurt face. has kept him in this yeah. position. AJ's had that quick flurry here and there. Well, yeah, that, exactly. But look at AJ's face, how contorted it is. A moment ago, we saw, uh, you know, that was more or less a cross face with a clasp. It hurts like hell when someone has that locked across your cheekbone, I am telling you. Oh, the pain so evident etched on the face of the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Kurt maintains the lock, the grip. You can see what a great close-up shot that was of how he had his fingers clasped as AJ back yeah. up to a knee. That's a start. Well, you're not going to see this type of wrestling anywhere else, folks. I'm telling you that right now. You're at the right spot. AJ uses the right hands to break the angle hold and also to start unleashing the offense. The chop with Kurt against the ropes now shot off. Here he goes. Close line, no. Oh, both men go for that cross body block, and well, both connected in the middle of the ring as you see both go down. Well, you know the old saying, great minds think alike, and I think that's what just happened there. And it was, uh, both men crashed into each other, sternum first. Who's gonna get to a vertical base first? I mean, this could be the turning point in the match. We're at five as the crowd counts along with the referee as both Angle and Styles and, try to regroup and try to get their air, try to get their and, win and, back. And when you're laying there, you're just hoping that that ref counts slower and slower. You know, you're in pain, you're tired, you don't want to get up. I'm telling you. But you got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nature, that's, that's Rick Flair. Nature boy, Rick Flair now. Making his presence known. We saw Rick earlier tonight. Oh. The interview with Christy Hemi and now Ric Flair coming down towards the ringside area to get an up close and personal look at this TNA World Heavyweight title match. Well, on, uh, on that January 4th show, on that Monday Night Live show, we saw when when, Kurt, uh, when Ric Flair arrived here, he went in AJ's locker room. So we know there's some sort of relationship there. We, you know. Recall we had Rick on commentary yes. for AJ Styles and Tomko on Impact. Whoa as Angle is elevated to the apron, and then oh. AJ, I think, caught Kurt unaware with that forearm shot that took Angle down to the floor. That was some shot for sure. Watch Styles here, oh my God, watch out, Kurt! Oh! We, we anticipated that he would go high risk at some point. AJ with the flip dive, crashing down on the Angle outside, Kurt favoring the leg and the knee. That was simply awesome. That was, that was awesome. I mean, I'm sick. Look at this. <laughs> Talk about throwing caution to the wind. Talk about trying to win. That's really And hold what? on to your title by, by any means necessary. But that's what got AJ to this position. That's what got AJ Styles to be TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and you know that that level of caution was only gonna last so long. Yeah. Oh. That time, he maybe should have been more cautious, caught with the boot, but he's got an answer for Kurt. Oh, trying to get across the upper spine area. Oh, man, that was nasty. AJ's leg went out on him momentarily as he took Kurt over. Well, 240 pounds went across his knee. Yeah, That's happen. what happened. AJ the measures, springboard. go springboard, caught him flush, follow pin, two. How smooth is AJ stop? He just makes it look easy, man. It's just, I can't explain to you people at home how hard it is to do what he just did. That springboard and get that height and that flying forward. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, Styles, oh. Went for the Styles clash, may have telegraphed it. That enables Angle to back body drop him. And oh, God, also what? for Kurt to connect 
with suplex number one. Just watching him through the years, one would anticipate there could be more to come. Yeah, well, once Kurt back arches and second German suplex keeps his fingers clasped. Ric Flair, an nature bar Ric Flair, legend himself is watching on here. Who knows what's going on in his mind right now? Wow, look at that. Third one released Ooh, overhead. And of course, we know the respect that Ric Flair has for Kurt Angle. We Absolutely. saw that on Impact as well this past Thursday. Long time friendship between both those men. But that counter to that arm drag. Kurt got arm drag. And AJ gonna go for a suplex instead. Oh! Wow. Standing switch and then the released overhead suplex get it, get by him, the challenger leads to a oh, two count. Explosive was that released German suplex, turning AJ inside out. Came just at the right time for the challenger. Because all of a sudden, Angle in the driver's seat. This is Angle's last opportunity at AJ's title in 2010. Can he do it? Pele! Kurt missed the clothesline. Angle hits the Pele. Gonna roll him over and go for the cover. He's got him. so many wins this way. But this time he only gets two. I might have been on instinct that that angle was able to kick out. You almost like you feel that sense of bewilderment from AJ turning to the referee Earl Hebner and asking him about the count. Earl says no, just two, and AJ yeah. has to be thinking about how many times he's won using the Pele. Also oh, uses that's the, that's oh. Gonna say he was used to set up the Styles Clash, which might have been where he was headed there, but oh. Kurtz got an answer for him. Just bum rushed him in the corner and oh, look at how powerful the shoulder blocks. Look at his wow. shoulders he just bring. Look at the body of AJ, how it gets positioned between the top and middle rope because well, of the impactful it, shoulder blocks. It's like Kurt was trying to put his shoulder right through AJ's body. Oof. That time it's the quickness of Angle. Oh. We always talk about the quickness of AJ, but that time it was Angle's quickness and then the power of the clothesline. This Blasted might be it. AJ. This one, we got a two. new champ. Oh. Blasted. That time Angle did hook the leg. Well, blasted AJ Styles. I mean, that clothesline was insane. Now what? Kurt maybe going for the ankle lock. Going to go for that ankle lock, trying to get it. And AJ, can he get momentum to roll through? Free leg this time is what he uses. Oh. Again, a. Talked about the powerful angle clothesline. AJ's got one as well. And we saw the intensity of the offense that AJ had brought throughout this match to Kurt Angle's spine and neck. That clothesline's not going to help the challenger. Champ first to his feet. Boy, they're just, it, it's all about imposing the will that the, right, right now in this TNA World Heavyweight title match as AJ positions him in the corner. And I would assume that it motivates both these men that a man to the level of Ric Flair is standing just a couple of feet from them while they're battling for the TNA Heavyweight title. Third angle, you're getting worn out, or maybe not. AJ kicked him, look at this! AJ came out of the corner, but Kurt moved out of the way. Oh! Talk about a bad landing. Suplexes him right into the corner, turnbuckles follow cover no. right in front of the Nature Boy for two. Well, this is where conditioning starts really taking effect. These men have been going for quite some time here at a just a death pace, so fast and aggressive. Cannot tell you how much it takes out of your body from a cardiovascular standpoint. Another classic in this series of matches between Kurt Angle and AJ Styles that we are witnessing tonight at Genesis. So much pressure on the shoulders of Kurt, knowing this is his last shot at AJ's title in 2010. But Styles comes out of the corner oh, and is man. able to snap it off. Our oh, champion is just, he's just that, he's just phenomenal. That was sweet. Wow, think of the World Heavyweight Championships that are represented by the three individuals out in the ring here, the 13 whoa, 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 by whoa, whoa. Kurt, as we see AJ go oh. for that splash off the top, the 450 doesn't connect. Oh, that might have done it, that might have done it. Angle slam by Kurt, here we go. Got here's him. one, here's two. Did it, oh! No. no. Wow. God, if you're Kurt Angle, you gotta think, oh, I just had it, it was right there. I think he got something like 40, probably championship reigns among the three men. I the would two competing so. in the ring, Rick 
Ric Flair at ringside as we try to do the math yeah. here. Well, right now, it's about the TNA Heavyweight title. Kurt Angle wow. challenge, a champion and is down, and AJ Styles. How about Kurt going high risk? Monster! Nothing but canvas on the way down as AJ's able to use his quickness to roll out of the way and just overall plain instincts no. on the part of Styles. Yeah, Kurt crashed and burned on that moonsault. But is AJ going to be able to take advantage of this situation? Well, well if nothing else, he gets to regroup and maybe get his air and win back. <laughs> AJ's not getting up, neither is Angle. Both men have just been having at it big time. The highest level you could imagine. Look at this, look at this, speed, just rushes right in. Sets him up, gonna go for the clash. He's gonna get that style special, and it's gonna be over. Oh, instead, Kurt's got an answer. As Kurt turns ah. the Styles clash into an ankle lock, that's awesome. a thing of beauty. Awesome, awesome, awesome. AJ trying to get to the rope, Kurt's pulling, we're gonna have Kurt a new champion. No. Kurt says no, Kurt says no, bring him right back out to the middle. Rolled through, good counter. Free leg, kicking away at Kurt, and finally the third kick does the trick for Styles. Well, what effect, that ankle lock was on for a while. AJ from the apron, slingshot oh, right wow. into the crossbody. Here we go, here's one, I here's get him, two. I get him, I get him, I get him! What a match. Awesome These series. These two just never disappoint. Near fall after near fall, both for the champ, for the challenger. Well, AJ's got something to mind bringing Kurt to the corner. Kurt not looking too sharp right now. He's got Angle. More to the neck. Positioned in the corner. Very strange, unique way as AJ goes up. What is... Oh, no, no. He's not going for the... No, he's not... I think he was trying to maybe get a Styles class from there. Uh, Might have been. I don't know how he hit it from there. Instead, off the middle rope. Oh, Kurt's, caught. Kurt's got him. Wait, 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 wait. Is Kurt going to use the Styles Clash on AJ? You're damn right he is. Here we go. He he the Here's move. two. Oh, oh, oh. Kurt almost beat AJ with his own move. Wow. Talk about scouting your opponent. Jeez. And talk about trying to send a message by how you beat him. That one was close. Yeah, that's a slap in the face if you lose with your own hold. Kurt Angle's got to be a, a little bit disappointed he couldn't get the win on that Styles clash. Angle connects with the kick. Well, Angle slam. Angle slam. Oh. Count him. Oh, God. In mid-move. AJ answers the angle slam by DDT. And again, the DDT was a pinpoint the neck. The angle's neck that AJ has put a relentless offense on throughout this, you know, this impressive, awesome match. Angle down off the DDT. AJ decides not to go for the pin attempt at this point. Instead, he heads to the corner. And as Kurt charges in, he's sidestepped by AJ. Kurt's shoulder first directly into the steel post. Oh! That's Kurt's Count move. Along with us. Here's two. Whoa. First we Wait. see the Styles clash by Kurt, and now the angle slam well, by AJ. I guess AJ's saying two can play that game. You want to take my move, use it on me. I'll take yours and use it on you. Turn about AJ. fair play. AJ and Earl Hebner talking about the cadence of the count. AJ thought he had it. AJ thought, look at Kurt's eyes. You it see was that? close. Kurt's eyes are just gazed over. Uh-oh, Kurt's not moving, and AJ is at home on that top rope, and I think that's where he's going. The champ headed to the top. Look at, look at Kurt! Quick burst of speed by Angle. Angle's playing possum! Angle slam, here it is! New champion Get in him. one, in two! He did it! Get him! Almost as if Kurt's, Kurt's looking around as we saw that close-up look. If he can get inside his head, oh, it's man. almost as if he says, what the hell else do I yeah. have to do? What do I have to do to win this TNA World uh -oh. Heavyweight title? And the straps oh, are down. Boy. He's going to take it to another level. Angle's you talk about up. his focus. You talk about his game face from the up. outset. And with the straps down, here comes the ankle lock. 
think the end is near, my friend. Check the ring positioning. Dead center. Perfect. Right in the middle of this traditional four-sided ring. Yes. He's got the ankle lock in it. Oh, no, no. No signs of Kurt letting go of that bad boy either. AJ reaching, trying to get the rope break. And when he does, Kurt just brings him right back with authority. Free leg is going to work. Not no, this time. no, no. Look at Kurt. Again, we talked about the grip strength, and we're seeing it here. Just tap, AJ. Just tap, man. He's gonna tear your ankle up. Oh, oh, no. And when he goes down and grapevines and scissors the leg, in addition to having the ankle He's gonna up, tap. that's taking the level of pressure. Way up. He's gonna He's tap on my... the verge. Did he tap right there? No. no His no. hand up. He's thinking about it, though. He's gonna tap out. He's got to. How long can he fight through this pain? What Wait, the hell what? just happened there? Ric Flair. Ric Flair just pulled referee Earl Hebner out of the ring, but AJ just tapped. AJ Styles just tapped to the ankle lock. Well, Flair pulled the ref out. What the hell is going on? Angle staring directly. Oh, he's hot. Angle's hot. Flair. And who the hell can blame him? I don't we, blame we him. We all just saw AJ Styles tap out. But because Ric Flair pulled the referee out, he was not in position to see the submission. Oh! Oh, Flair bailed. And as a result, AJ connects with the clothesline. Well, I think AJ just took, just took advantage of the opportunity at hand. Referee still down. Wait, wait a minute. Flair takes the TNA World Heavyweight Championship belt, slides it into the ring. He says, now. Well, AJ having second wait, thoughts. Wait, 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 let's see what happened. What the heck? AJ, no! Oh my God, I can't believe this. AJ with the, the, the title belt, smashing it into Where's the, the head. the referee is still down, oh, Kurt's down. The knockout blow, Flair takes Hebner, rolls the referee in. Hebner gonna count one, two. I don't, I, 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 I'm not, I don't believe what we've just seen. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner is still TNA World Heavyweight Champion. the direction from the dirtiest player in the game. AJ Styles just did what I saw him yeah. do. Well, you can talk about being influenced by the dirtiest player in the game, but I have to admit, I never thought that we would see this from AJ Styles, Rick Flair or not. Get that camera on me! It's all about me and Rick Wait, and that's where I'll see what AJ just said. It's all about me. I'm the champion of the world. How the unbecoming of AJ Styles, right? I mean, Kurt Angle was knocked out cold. Well, Rick Flair was out here the whole while. I mean, we didn't know. Mike, you look disgusted. I mean, I want you to know AJ Styles. I mean. Well, probably like nine years I've known AJ Styles. And, and I never saw that coming. Well, well we've got to go back and, uh, and, and review what was an incredible uh, TNA World Heavyweight yeah, title match, even though it had a shocking end. Well, it was as usual from these two amazing competitors. It was an epic, epic show. An epic, epic battle. I mean, both men just, just doing everything they got to do to each other to win the match. It could have ended so many different points, so many near falls, so many violent maneuvers. Just look, just look at the, the physicality here. How about when he went for the Styles Clash and tried to beat AJ in his own game, and then AJ right back with the angle slam. That was just an amazing matchup, and I gotta tell you, it's just, uh, and I, right there, I thought it was over. I thought that angle won the Me match. Too. I really did. And then, uh, uh, AJ was about to tap it. That's when Flair pulled the referee. Well, and there you see it, plain and simple, AJ Styles tapping, he oh, submitted. I thought AJ was just taking advantage of the opportunity to nail Angle, but well, I guess I was wrong. God, look at that. Flair slipped the belt in, and AJ had the choice. Well, AJ right. Styles had the choice, use the belt or do not use the belt, and quite honestly, he took the low road task. Well, I don't know, I mean, I, that's your opinion, I, I understand that. Work. Bottom line is, it's all about me. I mean, Kurt Angle is, 
lost any opportunity now at AJ's title in 2010. Right here. And AJ Styles shocks the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Keep the camera. when it comes to the first pay-per-view of the Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff era here in TNA, when it comes to Genesis, I'm not sure whether I'm more disappointed or absolutely disgusted to tell you that AJ Styles is still TNA World Heavyweight Champion. It's all about the title, and I have it.